baseball is dead. Rest in peace. It's a big day. It's a big, it's a re-entry Monday here on Baseball is Dead. You know what that means? Everyone's got to bring uh, a couple things to the table. First and foremost, we start off every single Monday. Everyone brings a story to the table. What did you like over the weekend? What stood out to you? We'll start there. But also, as we do every Monday now, we're on our third week of this. The Baseball is Dead DraftKings Parlay, where each one of us adds a leg to the parlay last week. Actually, you know what? The only two guys left standing... Me and Jay Hay, the two smartest baseball guys on the podcast, are two for two. Yeah. Dallas and his Shohei pick busted last week. Jake, unfortunately, the Red Sox couldn't come through for for us, not just for you, for us. Uh, and Joey, a, a very disappointing over two, but he said he has five different picks that he can go <laughs> with this week and thinks that all five are gonna hit. So he might just. Well, I'm gonna do my own parlay this week because yeah. I don't. I feel bad about taking you guys down. I heard everybody's been tweeting me. I like it. Uh, uh, thank you for holding me accountable. I'll just do my own parlay. It's all good. <laughs> thank you for holding me accountable. <laughs> I mean, they can't blame you for last week. Like, it's not like you were the only one that didn't hit last week. So no, nope, you blame me. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe that's. Uh, no, I was gonna. No, we can't do that. I was gonna say maybe it's a rule that if you if you don't hit two weeks in a row, then you have to miss the third week. But no, we need you. We need you here. This this is a team. This is a team. Leaders lead. You know, you you may be <clears throat> oh for your last two, but. We're we're here to pick you up. We're here to pick you up, Joe. Um, but hey, maybe this week I'm the only one who gets it right. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised either. That's that's the way that's the way parlays go, kid. And uh, speaking of Joe, I talked to him over the weekend. I was like, hey, I was like I think I got a little segment idea for you. A little little, uh, little Joey special that we're gonna break out on Wednesdays. And knowing Joe, he Joe's the kid in the class that's like he'll still get like a B plus, but he never does his homework. Like he just <laughs> he's that kid. Like he'll do pretty good on the test, but he didn't study. So I, I admittedly, I don't know if you're gonna if you're gonna remember to do this. Are you gonna remember to do this, Joe? Yeah. Okay. Every Wednesday, Brad. Every Wednesday. I was like, I think uh, I think it'd be cool to do like an on pace for segment where because obviously this year, Ronald Acuna Jr., everyone's talking 40-40. Is it going to be 30-60? Something like that. Just to check in, not just on Acuna, but that's kind of what got my brain going thinking about the segment. Uh, certain players and what they're on pace for. Like, hey, check in. Ronald Acuna Jr. is on pace for 73 stolen bases. What? Uh, so-and-so <laughs> is on pace for X amount of homers. What? Things like that. Yeah, so everybody just mentioned me on Twitter. Anyone, anything crazy, anyone's on pace, so I don't have to do any work, and I'll just take your guys's, and the segment will be sick. Yeah, you could do that as well. You could do that as well. Just mention, tell me who to do. Yeah. Tweet Joey, uh, at Baseball Doesn't, um, and then you can make suggestions. Be like, hey, this slap dick on my team, he's on pace for 50 doubles this year. <laughs> he's never had more than 20. So... I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see what you bring to the table. And I highlighted uh, Joe's got a weird brain, which is a compliment. Like, use your weird brain to your advantage. Um, all right. On a re-entry Monday, this is... Uh, I don't think that it, it's going to surprise anyone here. I'm going to go to Jay Hay first. I feel like this past weekend, there might have been something that happened that uh, Jay Hay has some takes, has some nugs, just has some things that he has to get off his chest. To to it's been it's been weighing on him for months, for years. And uh, Jay Hay, the floor is yours. Oh, so much happened over the weekend, but I think we can all agree <laughs> that the signature news was the Cubs designating Eric mm -hmm. Hosmer for an assignment. And that assignment specifically is to leave the team. Uh, yeah. he, he will not be not to interrupt, Jay, <laughs> but I feel like I, I just want to <laughs> double down on the fact that we don't often realize how many people started listening to us yeah. when it became baseball That's true. is dead. That's true. And they don't know that your pure hatred for Eric Hosmer goes back to the starting nine days, like as far back as when did he sign his contract with 
the Padres. Was that going into 18? Yeah, that was like our second season of podcasting, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it, like, uh, who is the who is the was it Fangraphs? There was some writer that ended up getting a job with the Padres front office. David who, Cameron. While he, yes. He was a Fangraphs. Yeah. So he, Fangraphs writer wrote this seething column <laughs> on why Eric Hosmer is overrated and why uh, he's just not worth a big money contract. And then the Padres <laughs> hire him and then sign <laughs> Eric <Gosh>. Hosmer <laughs> to a huge deal. Uh, yeah. So this this uh, I don't even want to call it a bit. It's real. Uh, this storyline with Jay Hay and Eric Hosmer goes back to the starting nine days, the very early days of starting nine. Uh, continue. Yeah, I, this is as real as anything I do on this podcast. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think the I think one final note on the starting nine thing, I think we really leaned into it when Dallas started talking about uh, the leadership that Hosmer brought <laughs> yeah. uh, to the clubhouse and how that was all worth it. And then, you know, you swing a wet noodle for half a decade and People stop following you, I guess. Uh, all right. Anyway, so uh, I'd love to unveil the top 15 Eric Hosmer facts. Uh, and we'll try to keep it moving here. But I really want people to be able to digest this top stuff 15. because it's important. And his career has been noteworthy. Uh, How did you land on 15? Did you get like you were trying to narrow down to 10, but you were like, I got I got 12 really good ones. So I could probably sneak in three more. Yeah, it's like. How stupid is too stupid? And I guess we're going to find out. Um, yeah. Here we go. Uh, fact number one. We're going to start at the beginning. He was born on October 24th, 1989 to Mike and Ileana, who are a nurse or were a nurse and firefighter, respectively. So, okay. Civil servants, public servants in some regard. Yeah. It's probably Leadership. why. Yep. That's why he turned out the way that he did. Prestige value, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, according to the Kansas City Star, fact number two. Hosmer used to watch Florida Marlins games to study the hitting techniques of the team's players in order to improve his skills. I think we can start to see where things might have gone wrong. Um, what, what about Juan Pierre? Yeah, well, I think I think Juan Pierre might have been the guy his game was modeled after. Fact number three, Hosmer was called up to the majors on May 5th, 2011. And do you know who was moved to make room on the 40 man roster? Oh, I do. I used to remember this. Uh, Former Oakland A great Jason Kendall. Yeah. Wow. All-star, I believe. Former All-star. Yes. For, yes, indeed. Um, on May 6, 2011, so the very next day, the Associated Rep Press referred to his debut in Kansas City as, quote, the most ballyhooed since Bo Jackson. Wow. Wow. High praise. Wow. wow. <laughs> what? What is that word? Ballyhooed. Yeah. It's, back. it's, it's how they talked me. back in 2011. Um, <laughs> now we get into the good stuff. Since his debut in 2011, fact number five, Hosmer has hit the second most ground balls in Major League Baseball behind only Elvis Andrus. Uh, 2,857 oh. ground balls. So congrats to him on that. If he never hits another ground ball in the majors, we can say he hit a lot of them. Uh, fact number six, in 2017, when he won his most recent, we skipped over some years that don't really matter. In 2017, when he won his most recent gold glove, Hosmer graded out at negative five defensive run saved, according to fi fan graphs. So won a gold the year that he won it, the year that he won his most recent gold glove, negative five okay. defensive runs yeah. saved. So Got it. a little bit of a conflict there. Fact number <laughs> yeah. fact number seven. Since the start of the 2018 season, Hosmer has received 2,584 plate appearances and been worth negative 0.1 wins above replacement. Okay. So that's, he's not really helping or hurt. 2,500 plate appearances <laughs> below 0.0, .0 wins above replacement. So, mm -hmm. well, they haven't had a stat that measures leadership yet. So I would say that's not really Boom. fair. To Fa him. Fact number eight. Since the start of 2018, Hosmer ranks 44th among batters in plate appearances and mm -hmm. tied for 2,214th in wins above replacement. <laughs> Is so, that bad? Getting opportunities, not cashiering them. Uh, mm. 2,213 batters uh, have done more uh, since 2018, of course. Uh, a lot of batters. Number nine, in 2019... Well, with the Padres, he led all first basemen in errors. Really? He did. 14. I did not. Uh, 14. Okay. That's not a lot. Everybody's that's, got a yeah. lead in something. He led in errors in 2019. 
Fact number 10, we're moving along here. Yeah. Aaron Judge produced more wins above replacement just last season than mm-hmm. Eric Hosmer has produced in his entire career. How is that possible? Uh, very good season by Judge. Pretty forgettable <laughs> career by Eric Hosmer, I guess. Is the, what was is it? The was it like, did he have like 12 war last year? Yeah, it was overall. He got, I think he climbed up on over 10, right about 11. Hosmer sitting right below 10, according to fan graphs. Um, That's stunning. It is. Uh, Fact number 11, Hosmer has tied for the seventh lowest average exit velocity this season out of 261 qualified batters. So not suffering from, you know, bad luck on balls in play, we'll say. Um, And now we really get into it. Since the start of the 2022 season, fact number 12, Hosmer trails the following people in wins above replacement. Barry Bonds, Ted Williams' frozen head. And Ben <laughs> Verlander, not Justin, oh, Ben Verlander. Fuck! All of those guys have 0.0. Holy ha- shit! Hosmer at negative Shots 0.1. Um, technically, everybody on this podcast ahead of him, too. Um, wow. We want to keep ripping names off, even, even Big DB. Uh, fact wow. number 13, if this is indeed the end, which none of us is hoping for, Hosmer ends his career tied on the war leaderboard with such luminaries as Hank Severide, Gene Richards and David Freeze. Oh, David Freeze, good yeah, player. Yeah, one of the most memorable hits I've ever seen live. That's for sure. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. Fact number fourteen: If Hosmer is able to add zero point three WAR to his total, he'll equal Pablo mm-hmm. Sandoval. If he adds, okay, wa- that's not a class you want to be in. If he adds one point five WAR, he'll tie Colby Rasmus. Mm. And if he's able to add nine more, so almost a Barry Bonds type resurgence late career, yeah, he'll be able to equal Brandon Belt. I thought we were going Harold Baines, but he's he's a little oh, higher up there. You know me too well. At his current rate, fact number fifteen. <laughs> yeah. At his current rate, nine point eight F WAR through thirteen seasons, Eric Hosmer would pass Harold Baines in career WAR midway through his age seventy three season (laughs) that is 15 facts about eric cosmer's career we will update them as necessary on this podcast if he signs with a new team but i appreciate everybody listening and congrats to eric uh on what's been a tremendous 13 year run um if you want to learn more about his career and some of the other stuff he did between 2011 and 2018 um check out his wikipedia page i guess Thank you, Jay Hay. Thank you. Oh, it's too, oh, you're too much. Waiting, uh, you're too much. Thank you. <laughs> Jay Hay has been waiting, uh, I don't know, six years for that. So <clears throat> congratulations, I think. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know how that works. Um, <laughs> Dallas, what do you have from this past weekend? Uh, that your Don Alvarez is an absolute fucking freak. Yeah. <laughs> absolute fucking freak. Um, <clears throat> well, I just w- watching the dude, watching the dude hit, watching his setup, watching his stance, you know, you watch guys make certain adjustments in the box, whether it's with their hands choking up a little. We watch Bregman at times get a little higher on the bat, uh, than he is at times, but your Don Alvarez because he has learned how to use Minute Maid to his benefit, the ballpark itself, um, and because he's so fucking strong, he has he has done something similar to what Anthony Rizzo has done by creeping up on the plate. Jordan Alvarez cocks his back foot a great deal, and he he opens it. So if you're standing straight up and down, and you were to turn your feet outward, that is what I mean by open. So imagine his back foot, his left foot opening up. All right. And so now it's it's not straight across the back of the line of the batter's box. It's really where his toe is kind of on the line and his heel is cocked inward. <clears throat> and what this allows this dude to do, and Jay, you could look at the numbers against the left handers. Um, they're pretty good. He's hitting north of 300 against lefties. He fucking bangs. And I watched him hit a slider down and away from a lefty. 
into the second deck into right field. Like there was just, when the ball came out of our pitcher's hand, I didn't expect to see Jordan maybe even slightly off balance. And even if that were the case, I definitely did not expect this ball to be hit into the second fucking deck. And it was with relative ease. So it, it just, when when we talk about pure hitters in this game, I love to have that conversation because there's multiple things that captures your attention, that turns somebody into a pure hitter in your mind. And watching your Don just nice and easy cut a swing down and hit a 106-mile-an-hour ground ball up the middle because that's what he's got, and then have the ability to fucking launch a slider down and away pull side into the second deck because he's just that strong like it's just borderline unfair to watch this dude take swings because it feels like the minute you step on the mound and he watches the ball come out of your hand he's got you timed up and he knows what he wants to do to you Hmm. i have two follow-ups there firstly to your point about the stats uh among all batters since 1974 lefty batters with at least 500 plate appearances against lefty pitchers uh, Jordan, the only person who has a higher OPS than Jordan is Barry Bonds. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, it's fucking un- and like as a left hander, I can feel what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like I can feel lefties that yeah. have an idea of what they're trying to do specifically against left handers. You can feel that shit. And he's a dude that you can just feel. He's like, nope, I'm cocking my foot. Front side is going to stay closed. I'm a beast. If it hits me, I'll wear it. But otherwise, the money's going to be made with you being a little bitch out there on the mound, afraid to throw me anything over mm. the plate because I can hit it out of the park any direction. There, there are only three lefties with OPSs over 900 against lefties over that stretch, and it's just Bonds, Jordan, and Larry Walker. And that's like, I think speaks to what those, you're saying. Those first two uh, guys pretty good. I have a question about your thing about the uh, the park, like the park adjustment, like tailoring mm-hmm. how he's angled or how he's standing to how common, I know this is kind of a tough question, but how common is that? Like how often uh, are hitters, particularly great hitters, like kind of reconfiguring how they go about things based on, to that degree, based on where they play their home games? Look no further than Poppy, right? Look no further than a guy like Anthony Rizzo, like I've talked about. Yeah. That now, in, in like like Rizzo, for example, and he was on the plate in, in Chicago. I mean, that's nothing new, but the idea is if you've got a ballpark where you just need to get the ball in the air, And where does your power come from predominantly if that's pull side pop? Well, what Rizzo has decided to do was I'm going to eliminate the idea of pitches being outside to me. And I'm going to get on the plate. And so if you throw me anything away, essentially that's middle to me. And anything, you know, away, away off the plate is now middle away to me. And it might still be something that I can handle, but it's a ball. So now I've got the uh, I've got the luxury of determining that's a ball out of the hand because it's out i spit on it or you know what that's a borderline strike but based on my setup that's middle for me and i can get my a swing off on on this guy and think about poppy let the ball travel let the ball travel and beat it off that 40 foot fucking wall out there and the worst case scenario is it comes down at a really high angle 40 plus and it's a double because you're running to second because it's a fly ball you know, now now he runs into some issues, you know, pull side, but the guy had power to, to override that. Didn't matter. So you're able to turn the park and use it to your <clears throat> to your benefit. And it takes great hitters who understand their body, understand their swing, and are confident in in hitting in certain positions to do that and to be able to repeat that approach. Cause it is something that has to be learned, right? But when you find somebody that has the capacity to do that, they can turn themselves in to quite a dynamo. And I mean, Poppy Hall of Famer, obviously, but I mean, Rizzo, his adjustments are always fun to watch because he's a cerebral hitter. He's looking for shit. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, those are, those are just a a couple of, a couple of examples off the top of my head. Mm. Um, Joseph, what do you got? I would just like to use this time to shit on the pirates real quick. Oh, Fuck your face. Come on. Quickly. Just why? Damn, well, like I love the pirates do you? almost do you? as much as do you? Uh, almost as much as Dallas. Do you? I, I do I do love them. 
tell us, Chelsea. And I don't even think it's fair to play the music. I think that's rubbing it in. I didn't want this to be a uh, anti-pirate segment. I was well, just you, tell them, yeah, that's exactly what you wanted it to be. No, I was going to say how bad they've been, but I didn't want it to be anti-pirates. I thought it was going to be more motivating. I would love to positive. see <laughs> how you could make a, a segment about the Padres being bad positive, but go ahead. Try your best. <laughs> Well, the bad pirates are actually, if you look at the stats, they're four and thirteen in their last seventeen games. Since May, they're four and thirteen. That's I don't know how bad that is against the other teams. I know they scored less runs than any other team in May, which is crazy because coming into May, they were fourth in the league and scored runs. They were on fire. They were raising it. We were playing the song every podcast. Mm-hmm. Since then, they fell. They went from thirty one percent probability to make the playoffs 12 percent. right now the cubs have a better chance to make the playoffs than the pirates which sucks because the P- P- cubs just got rid of hosmer and we know where that ship is going so maybe <laughs> i don't think they're gonna get rid of kutch that would probably be an equivalent maybe move maybe that's gonna inspire them they're not gonna get rid of kutch don't do it unfortunately i think the pirates might be dead wow, wow. that is Unbecoming. It's not true. We can start there. It's not true, but <laughs> pretty aggressive. Start there. Brian Reynolds got paid and then promptly stopped hitting homers this season. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One, one, one homer in 37 of his last 37 games. <laughs> yeah. Tough. You guys are They had the right second now. best record in baseball. And looking back on that, now it's just like, what the fuck? What? Still? They had it. No, they did. Oh, they had, had it. Say, At yeah, the yeah. end of May, they had the second best record in baseball. Today, I don't know. They, I don't know they, what they would rank, but they have a worse record than the Blue Jays, who are in last place. Yeah, well, that's obvious. The Pirates are I two think games you above could... five hundred. Yeah, they got their work cut out for them. They got Four a better winning percentage than the Mets, though. We just need a little help. That's all. We just need a little help. Just get back to banging like we were. We'll be fine. No big deal. No big deal. Slow and steady. It's a long season. Ugh, no big deal. It is a long season. That's probably why the Pirates, you know, they they were built for April. I'll tell you that right now. They were built. We're, for doing, April. We're, we're fine. Just a little rough patch. Just a little rough patch on the mound. We're fine. Yeah. No okay. problem. Well, I think it's more the offense's problem. They're they are last in run scored. They've scored forty seven runs. In May, which well, is dead last out of how many games? 17 games. Yeah. What is that? 40, yeah. The 43 divided by 17. We, we, we just need a little help. What night was the it? Game. Go ahead. Was it Thursday or Friday that the Cardinals had that seven home run game? Was that Friday? I have no idea. I think it might have been Friday. Either or. Either, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> the night. It was either Thursday or Friday, the night that the St. Louis Cardinals hit seven home runs. I went back and looked, and uh, I I tweeted out that the Cardinals just hit as many home runs in one game as the Pittsburgh Pirates and Cleveland Guardians to that point had hit all month. Not good. A little bit of a power outage. It's okay, though. It's okay, though. <laughs> a little bit. We're fine. No, nope. everybody yeah. should just bottle that first month or whatever it was, like a snow globe, and just you know, kind of enjoy it for what it was because it's never coming back. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to say that. That's not true. I mean, there there could be inspiration around the corner. That's you don't not know. True. You don't know. We don't know. They could get hot. Yeah. Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes teams come up with with things, whether it's on the field, whether it's marketing, whatever they need to do to create excitement, they'll do the- it. Yeah, they will do it. So you just don't know where it's coming from. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Hmm. It's funny because if you line it up like the Pirates were doing so good, they were just pulling up career minor leaguers just for the fun of it. They're like, fuck it. You know, we're so far. It doesn't matter. We'll pull up this guy and he he has no chance of ever playing the major leagues. We're going to pull him up just for fun. It worked. Everyone got was hyped. The guy performed. Maggi, Mm -hmm. Drew Maggi, shout out, had a good three game stretch. They got rid of him. And guess what happened? They fell because is it the curse last of game Drew Maggi? It's the curse of, of Drew Maggi. The last game he played was April 30th. Since then, they're four and 13. Mm. They went from first 
to probably the worst. <clears throat> Is anyone else making that connection that they called them up and then once they sent them back down that the Pirates have not been the same club ever since? <laughs> it's can't, a good connection. They were you getting start cocky. That we're narrative. just calling them up. Can't derail that vibe in the clubhouse. Just, no, so you got to fucking do something. Can't derail yeah. that vibe in the clubhouse. You, you bring a guy up and everyone's like, wow, man, anything can happen. You know, this guy's been grinding in the minors for 16 years. He finally gets called up. You know what? Get your ass back down there. And now the vibes are crushed. And they hey, it's a, it's, well, a, it's a win now business, man. Was, and if you're in the win now business, you know what you need? A What's Bob that? guarantee. Maybe we've, been <laughs> yeah, you do. maybe we've been looking in the wrong place the mm -hmm. whole time. Mm-hmm. Fuck, man. You know how many DMs did I say? I must have said something on the podcast. Like, if you want to know the real Bob Guerin and Dallas Braden story, to send me a DM <laughs> because I got fucking 500 DMs over the weekend. People being like, "Yo, what's the what's the actual story?" <laughs> and I was like, "Wait, why why are people DMing me?" This? I think I prompted people to do that. Did I see, what you, see what you've done. <laughs> see what you've done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people. <clears throat> People want to know. People want to know what happened. And um, I told, trust me, I told, I fucking responded to every single DM. I was like, trust me, you want to hear the story? <laughs> Sit down, pull up a seat, pull up a seat. I'll tell you about the time that Dallas Braden got Bob Guerin fired and he hasn't had a managerial job in the big league since. Guy fucking blackballed him from baseball. But um, I just went into more detail with the people that had reached out for uh, clarification Good. on the glad story. You glad you clarified that with him. <laughs> yeah, I did. Uh, what I'm bringing to the table on this Monday morning, it's something that I tweeted out over the weekend, but I've, I've got some updated statistics. They're not, <clears throat> they're not as good as they were. I think it was on Friday, uh, but they're still pretty good. Since we opened up the voicemail lines <clears throat> for St. Louis Cardinals fans who were pissing and moaning, sell the team, blah, 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 one month into the season since the day. We open up the voicemail lines for Cardinals fans. St. Louis has won 11 of 17. That is the fourth best record in Major League Baseball. They are fourth in batting average, 274. Third in on-base percentage, 346. First in slugging percentage, 496. First in OPS, 842. Second in homers, 33. First in extra base hits, 65. First in total bases, 297. And first... In run scored with 117. You're welcome, you whiny fox. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Never in my life have I experienced a more fucking pissy ass whiny fan base that's so unappreciative, by the way. We we throw out the the voicemail line, we got Cardinals fans calling in, and then a a, a video of me and Jay Hay. Breaking down the situation makes its rounds on baseball Twitter, and you got Cardinals fans. He's not making fun of us. You don't know the struggle of making the fucking playoffs every year. You guys don't get it. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I mean, now you're welcome. We change your season. The baseball is dead. Voicemail lines strike again, where we open up the lines. We hear you guys cry about your team. And then your season promptly gets turned around or your manager gets fired or both sometimes in the case of the Phillies. And they didn't um, even have to sell mm, the team. Season turned around. Didn't, didn't even have, have to sell, sell the, the team. team. Yeah. Mosaic lives to ruin another April. Didn't have to send the Clydesdales to the old glue factory. <laughs> no, you sure <laughs> didn't. You sure didn't. Uh, so you're welcome. I, I learn, learn to accept the, pol the apology that you never received. That's that's uh, some of the best advice I ever got in life. Learn to accept the apology that you never received. It's deep. It's deep. Dallas, when is the time that you had to accept the apology that you never received? Every day. Every day I wake up. <laughs> Every single fucking day I wake up. I accept the apologies that I'm never going to get. That's just life. That's my life anyway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. You going through it right now? Yeah. No, no, I'm I'm, I'm fine. I've, the shit has been about as smooth sailing for me as it could possibly be. You, yeah. You didn't ask me, but this is a great time to bring up RJ and Mr. Maxwell again. Just shout out to anybody yeah, listening yeah, on the yeah. podcast. That's an apology mm -hmm. I still have not received in a couple of weeks yeah. since we first brought it up. So don't right. want to derail us, but quick plug. <laughs> quick, quick plug. 
still holding on to the <clears throat> the little league grudges, which I appreciate more than most people. Um, I also appreciate Indochino a lot. Um, by the way, I I I need speaking of getting DMs, I got a DM from this kid, listener of the podcast, and he said, "What'll it take to get you to come to my brother's wedding?" Um, <laughs> I don't think there's any anything on earth that will get me to go. I hate like <laughs> I, I'm such an awkward person at weddings because I hate dancing. No, I you like gotta the socializing. Go in, Jared, you go in with a fucking mindset, bud. See, you're you're already failing yourself. Of you what? go in of what you go in your no. like, treat this like a podcast session. You go in there for an hour mm-hmm. and you go in there as mm-hmm. the rocket and whether or not you yep. get sauced up, however you want to be the rocket on that day you determine but for Mm -hmm. me if it's a yes if i'm local if i can make it happen i'm showing up and it is going to be a fucking tornado for an hour for an hour (laughs) i'm making out with your grandmother i'm making out with your mom (laughs) and we're gonna have a there's gonna be pictures people are gonna be like holy shit was this a three-day rager what the fuck happened is that aunt bessie wearing no undergarments how did we get here are you shitting me? Yeah. Is that Dallas Braden naked on a shot luge at your wedding? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck I mean, yeah. I, I, it's, it's not a no. I haven't, I haven't responded yet. I've actually, in addition to this individual asking me to come to his brother's wedding, uh, there was someone else, a friend that was like, hey, uh, one of my girlfriends is getting married and one of my girlfriends needs a plus one. Do you want to come to the wedding? And I was like, eh. It's also like a Red Sox Yankees weekend. So like that one's definitely a no. Um, But I've been getting invited to a lot of weddings recently. And that's where Indochino can really step up for you and and make all the difference in the world. If you're actually going to show up to these weddings, looking sharp all wedding season shouldn't be expensive with a custom fitted suit from Indochino. You'll create priceless memories without costing a fortune. Customize every detail on your suit. Uh, shirt, dinner jacket, and more in a range of colors from traditional black or gray to burgundy or olive to classic Hemsworth navy. Ooh, Uh, I went with Indochino for Coley's wedding. That is a wedding that I did show up to. Uh, So when I do go to weddings, Indochino is the way to go because it's just it's inexpensive. You look great. You feel great. Everyone takes a million pictures on wedding days, if it's even if it's not your wedding, you're just you're in every single picture. They make for great uh, dating app photos as well. Every suit is made to your exact measurements, and you can customize every detail. Create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly with options for fabrics, lapel shape, uh, custom monograms, statement linings, and more. They also have tuxedos starting at five hundred seventy nine dollars. Why rent when you could just buy a custom tux that you can rewear for years to come? Indochino also offers completely custom fitted shirts, casual wear, and more. Get a superior wardrobe personalized for your style uh, and taste without the luxury price tag. They're always adding new pieces and options so you can stay on trend and in style. Explore their relaxed yet refined approach to spring suits with their new spring fabrics. RSVP, knowing that you've got the perfect look all wedding season long from Indochino. Go to Indochino.com. Use the promo code DEAD, D-E-A-D, to get 10% off any purchase of $399 or more. That is I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com, promo code DEAD. I don't know. It's a maybe. I don't know. I'd, I'd love to be able to go. I just, you know, it is what it is. You can make a day of it. That is what it is. Yeah. Um. All right. Um. The New York Mets once again in the news. Uh, because the New York Mets had some drama over the weekend, but also there was some good and some bad. You can take the good with the bad when it comes to the New York Mets. Um, if. We, should we replay the Kipnis thing? I feel like for, for full context, we should replay the, the Kipnis thing. Is that something that we're interested in? Play. Uh, I, I mean, if you're going to play it, play it. Otherwise, I think it's easily described. 
Well, I mean, he he took a shot at at the homie, Francisco, Francisco Lindor. It's fucked up. All those veterans and no leadership. Ooh. Well, you played with Lindor. Is he a leader? I'm going to repeat it again. All those veterans and no leadership. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jason Kipnis <laughs> coming after Francisco Lindor. And then he walked it back on Twitter. And we, we covered that on the last episode, walking it back on Twitter. Um, but Mrs. Lindor. Uh, at, well, before that, actually, Francisco Lindor responded. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's, let's do you have his response from S. Yeah. From SNY TV. Um, from SNY TV. Give me Jason Kipnis. Yeah, this was uh, I think he took the high road. Took the high road. I can appreciate. Francisco, what you read what Kipnis said. Did you about the Mets and Mets leadership? What What was your response? Have you talked to him, or what was your response? I haven't, to him? I haven't talked to him. Um, he He. Um, that's how he feels, and yeah, it is what it is. I. Um, yeah, that's all I. Uh, I don't really have much to say. That's uh, taking the high road. I mean, like, put it this way. If I were Francisco Lindor, I signed a contract for 300-something million dollars. I'm playing for the New York Mets. I'm still a very good player. I'm still in the league. And then you have a guy like Kipnis who is no longer in the game, and he's a guest on a podcast, and he's just spouting off for no fucking reason, really. Like, that's the way to go. And, and from what I understand, because I was kind of curious, I was poking around. I was like, what was their relationship like when they played together in Cleveland? And I was essentially told that like they weren't exactly buddy, buddy, but like there was no beef or riff. They just weren't buddy, buddy. Um, but that's that's the perfect way to answer that. It's like, yeah, fuck. Who cares? Who cares? Like, who cares? <laughs> like, oh, he the only didn't, thing he Francisco, didn't even, like, insult Kipnis. No, the only thing Francisco Lindor would have coming his way is questions about how his relationship was with Jason Kipnis and why is this still something that you're talking about? And, and so it is a complete non-factor in the life of Francisco Lindor, a complete and total, like mm -hmm. a legit next question. Like, like, are you still like, stop? Why are you even talking about, you know, like you, you would just look at the reporter <laughs> next time and go, well, what are you, is that your question? Okay. Who's got someone else? I agree that it's it's like not something he gives any thought to at all. But I will say, listening to his answer, there was like that pregnant pause for a second where I he feel like to. he was considering. He was like, should I say what I really want to say? Nah, what the hell good would it do me? And then he just fucking yep. basically bailed out of the conversation. And so yep. credit, credit to him uh, for all the reasons you laid out. You, you know what that might show, Jay Hay? And correct me if I'm wrong here. <clears throat> Could that show some leadership? That's exactly what mm. I was thinking, buddy. That's what I was thinking. I don't mm. know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. No, because a an immature, bitter person would have would have mouthed off. Like that's what I would have done. I would have told the reporter, "Here's what I think about Jason Kipnis. Are you ready? How long's your <laughs> tape, baby?" Um. Mm. This is um. <clears throat> Mrs. Lindor <laughs> had a response over the weekend for uh, for Jason Kipnis. Yeah. And this is a tweet. My husband is such a classy person, would never say what a bully Kipnis was in the clubhouse. <laughs> Sounds like a true leader versus the opposite yeah. of a leader. See, okay, now... God, she exposed him so bad. She just exposed him. <laughs> well, that's exposed, mm. exposed her husband. I mean, there you go. Like, so, Joe, I mean, I I understand where you're coming from as well. We all need to put our objective hats on and, and remember, mm -hmm. like, we just got done calling Frankie a leader, Francisco Lindor a leader because of the route that he chose to take, right? <clears throat> also remember that when Francisco Lindor is at the field, and in any other, I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't speak this way because I can't speak to his 
to his marital status and how they vibe with each other. But my guess is she could she's her own woman. She can do whatever the fuck she would like to do. And and he's probably not somebody who's controlling her every move. So the point here is other people are going to say and do things that you can't control, even when they're your spouse. So whether or not Lindor was notified that that tweet was going to be fired off or not, eh, you know, we can discuss that. But the fact is it did get fired off. And what you take away from the context of that tweet is that, uh, and I'm sure this is going to shock some people, but when you're married, you tend to share things about your daily life and the ongoings of your professional life with that person. So there's a solid chance that she was privy to some conversations that maybe other people weren't about the goings on in a clubhouse. That's just me. Again, I can't speak to how they communicate in their relationship, but that would be my guess. So it's not like this is coming with zero substance, right? And if you are hearing, Jared, that these are two players who existed in the same clubhouse, never had a beef per se, but weren't buddy, buddy, didn't really get along. I think you could start to realize that maybe it's because one of those two players had an attitude that the other just wasn't gravitating towards or that maybe multiple people weren't gravitating towards. And when that happens, I think you could probably start to find yourself on an island in a room as opposed to feeling like you're a part of a group. And it sounds like Francisco Lindor's wife had a really good handle on a lot of stuff that may or may not have been going on in that clubhouse. Mm. Where where do you think she would have gotten information like that if she doesn't play? <laughs> well, like, like the- okay, so <clears throat> like wives and girlfriends and spouses of players and right, like if they're going to watch the game, Jared, they kind of hang out in the same area. So she very well, you know, I'm not saying that she heard this from a player. I don't, I can't say that, yeah. but maybe she's got friends in that wives and girlfriends club or the spouses mm-hmm. club in the family section, right? Maybe she heard it there. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's, she's probably that's just listening to possible. Kipnis on, on doing his podcast appearances. <laughs> she's just probably tapped into the foul territory podcast. Could be. Heard some of his takes. Those yeah. are bully takes. He's a bully. He Jason Kipnis responded to to Mrs. Lindor. Yes, he did. He said, quote, I'm not so sure about the bully, but I said earlier and I'll say it again. Terrible take on my end and I was wrong. Should be proud of the man he's grown into and nothing but love for the Lindor family. Can admit when I fucked up. Sorry it even got to here. So I mean, it's too late at that point. Well, no, 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 no. Time out. Okay, it can, it can. If it's too late, then it's too late. Then why are we having the conversation? But what would he do? What would you have him do in the moment? Would you have him? Would you have him stick by the take and like double, triple down on it? Because then what's no. happening to him, right? So, so then if, the, no. if that's if that's not what you wanted to see, then the next possible act is for him to do that and go, look, man, you know what? I got a little fired up. Maybe maybe it's a little early. Maybe it already. Maybe I. I was coming home from brunch. You know what happens at brunch? I have found the bottom of endless mimosas before. So I'm just saying maybe you got a little excited, said what you said, and realized, you know what? That was just not great. That I can see the I can see the terrible take label written all over that. I don't want to just let that be out in the in the universe without me addressing that it was a bad take. So here's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say it again. Here's an opportunity for me to get defensive, but I'm not gonna do that. Hand up. It was a fucking bad take, man. And I do. I'm glad to see the kid develop into the guy he's become, the leader he's become. That would have been a great word to throw out there. Um, and, but I don't think he is glad. Well, well that's where e- your apology could either, f- you know, fall and sound hollow, or you could say that, and mean it, and hopefully he meant it, so that he can sort of like be like, "Yo, Lindor, my bad, dog. Maybe we'll connect at a later date and say this." But I need it public that that I, I understand that this was probably not my best take. It was a no-win situation once he doubled down. Sure. Because I think if if he sits there and says there are there's no leadership in the Mets clubhouse, 
then you would have like the internet sleuths being like, oh, well, Lindor's in the clubhouse. Is he talking about Lindor? And then he could double back and be like, no, I mean, yes, like I think Lindor is a fine leader. I just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm looking well, at the more veteran guys. It's an older team. Like people would be like, oh, okay. Like he just, he, he misspoke or he just misremembered that Lindor is on the team. But when Perzinski, again, Joey's point, credit to Perzinski for being like, well, what about Lindor? Yeah. And he's like, Fuck Lindor. Yeah. <laughs> he a well, bitch. He ain't that, no that right there. Like he doubled down on it and meant that shit. Well, th- it's it's funny when you think That's about why, it. That's because- why like no apology or or walking back the situation. Like it's never it's not gonna mean anything at this point because we're talking about a former player that is just now getting his first taste of doing podcasts and getting his word out there and people cutting clips and seeing the clips and then seeing the reaction to it publicly. Like that's why you're walking it back. If Mets fans or neutral baseball fans were in agreement. We're talking about a player like, I don't know, uh, let's say it was Manny Machado that he's talking about. And like the general public was like, you know what? Good point. Like Manny, like what if Manny isn't a good leader? And like, that's how we feel. And we agree with that. But the general public did not feel that way. They're like, why would you come after Lindor? Like he's a super nice guy. Like, like you played with him when he was 24. What kind of leadership skills are you going to have when you're just fresh into the league? Like that's super unfair. So I think he just saw no one agreed with him. And that's why he misspoke and took his take back. It's because everyone was like, your takes trash. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's I mean, why. to, to, and he, he, did, well, uh, how do I say this? He was left to make a decision. And if doing, you know, the podcast circuit or getting into media or whatever is something that he has an intention of, then his walking back of it and whatever, that's probably an angle that he would take. If he was really just there to sort of peel the curtain back and give everybody some insight, then I can understand him doubling down because he's like, you know what? I don't give a fuck about a podcast. I don't care about me getting clipped up and spit out to the <clears throat> Twitter verse. And I don't care what I look like. Here's my take. I played with the guy. This is my opinion based on my personal experience. He didn't do any of that, but it's interesting because given the opportunity to, to reroute, he chose to continue to run the fucking run the nine route and just keep going. And Lindor, when given the opportunity to reroute did exactly that. Mm. Mm. well that's the end of that i suppose um but on the positive side of mets news joe you uh you were critical about what the Mets are paying Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer and the mm. output that they're that they've been able to give uh the Mets so far this season do you want to pull yeah Jason just me Kipnis. I'm the only one <laughs> that's well <laughs> is your tweet your tweet did big numbies um do you want to offer up a retraction a la Jason Kipnis uh I, what is it Joe 14 innings one run <laughs> 14 innings one run or something, something like, like that, that yeah. between the two Mets are back the Mets are back man the Mets are back they've won five in a row all by one game okay I'm not gonna dock points but yes it's been uh, sorry one run but five one run wins in a row the Mets are hot ever since they put the Tampa Bay's logo on their scoreboard by accident got embarrassed got humiliated people are roasting them they're on fire Firing I think the, the most boys. important part the, the, the you know you went five in a row that's great but like to have Scherzer and Verlander go back to back days and pitch as well as they did that's like the best thing the best sign for Mets fans so that's more important than winning five in a row in my opinion Hmm. didn't well didn't they hmm. pitch on they pitched on the same day didn't they same day the double header yes Yes. double (laughs) yes that's I mean obviously Justin Verlander has has pitched Justin Verlander has pitched well uh in all but what one start in a a small sample size for the Mets Mm -hmm. this is more encouraging to come from Max Scherzer like I didn't need to Scherzer like you know, Verlander, step the fuck up, man. Like we need, like Justin Verlander goes out there. Uh, and by the way, on the other side in that Verlander game, just <laughs> Justin Shane, I cannot believe I did that. Shane Bieber, eight innings, seven hits, two earned, two walks, four Ks and a homer. 
And then uh, then you have Justin Verlander also going eight innings, three hits, one earned, did not walk a batter, five strikeouts. So you had both starters, I think for the first time this season, both Go going eight. eight innings. Yeah, in that one. And then the Max Scherzer start, that was a game that the Mets almost blew. Um, <clears throat> it took um, a two-run bottom in the eighth to to save Mets fans from from losing their shit because the the guards scrapped across four runs in the top of the eighth. But Max Scherzer, <clears throat> six innings, three hits, zero earned runs, only one walk, and five strikeouts. That was very much necessary. We needed that. You needed to see Max Scherzer go out there and and I don't want to say look dominant, but look good. Like the I didn't need the bar to be that high. He didn't have to go out there and do what Verlander did, go eight innings, whatever. But go out there and look decent to to good. That's what he did. And that that probably the biggest start of the year for him. No home runs allowed either. And no home runs allowed. That's true in four of his last five. So that's that was an indicate that was something we were looking at at the beginning of the year. I, yeah, I think the it's, homer rate. Yeah, and listen, I've been I've been saying we need to give Verlander and Scherzer time before we panic hard on the Mets. I, I think it is also worth noting on the other side that this is very much a get right offense for opposing pitchers. Cleveland's offense sucks, and for <laughs> the Mets starting pitching, Carlos Carrasco aside, to have cut through them, I don't think is. It's not shocking uh, to me. It's something that like, like if well, Scherzer would have gotten knocked around by this offense, I would have been exceedingly. I mean, they might be the worst. This might be the worst offense in baseball. Just b- numbers, t- talent, like the whole thing. Um, so I think that's worth mentioning that their opponent was really bad. <laughs> but I mean, is there nothing to the <clears throat> the lack of? I mean, I don't want to say complete lack of, but I mean. Guards put the ball in play. For sure. Yep. So what is it? The, we're talking about the second, right second lowest strikeout rate in the league. Yeah. Behind what? Houston. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, Nationals. Sorry. Actually, Nationals have the lowest strikeout rate. Oh, wow. But um, um, yeah, but yeah I, I, I just I, I was just thinking like with their stuff, you know, because these are I don't want to call it a true test, but when you face a lineup that puts the ball in play that can battle, you know, your five or six inning outing with just five strikeouts or whatever from Scherzer, that can look a hell of a lot different when you aren't generating swing and miss and you're somebody who is used to doing so. That can be a test where, all right, I don't have the finish on the fastball up top right now, or I don't have the action on my slider that I'd really like right now, or the separation on the changeup and fastball is not as good as I would like it to be right now. I have to figure some shit out. I have to battle. I have to be gutsy here. Um, I, I think that's a good sign to your point against a lineup who is a get right lineup. But if you're going to be generating some swing and miss and you're not going to be or and you're going to be commanding the baseball, not adding traffic, and you're also avoiding counts where you're seeing guys get good big swings off in advantageous counts against a team that puts the ball in play and can grind you out, those are just little little things to you know to take away from little positives i think that you can kind of put in your cap yeah why well, that's why the lack of swing and miss and the strikeouts i think they combined for like 10 strikeouts or something like that in in 14 innings pitch so it was not that to me seemed like a game plan or at least something that those two pitchers what? were not overly concerned about to your point like like th- they were not going to overexert themselves trying to get strikeouts against a team that was not going to give them strikeouts because they know that if the Guardians put the ball in play, which they do all the time, they're not going to get punished for it. And they didn't get punished for it. Uh, and, you know, that's part of why Verlander was able to go eight innings and throw 98 pitches uh, is because he wasn't worried about the fu- anything nope. beyond it is. just getting the outs. Three hits, five Fuck. strikeouts, bada bing. Yeah. No walks. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, so anyway, I'm I'm encouraged, but. Cleveland's offense is terrible. Mm-hmm. It is pretty bad. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> Lindor getting some heroics uh, too, or some clutch clutch play against the Guardians was was poetic as well. Yeah, that couldn't have ended any better, right? The fucking <laughs> walk on. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't that mad about it. <laughs> um, speaking of bad. 
very quietly, the Tampa Bay Rays have a losing record since May 9th. <laughs> Ooh. They, it's a bad uh, day for them. They, they have lost. Oh, yeah. Is that the anniversary of the perfect game? I wasn't going to bring it up. You did, but yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> since the anniversary of Dallas Braden's perfect game against the Tampa Bay Rays in 2010, the Tampa Bay Rays have lost 7 of 12. Um, not good. They'll be fine, but I mean, it's 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 really uh, when you look at their schedule and you see the teams that they've played. That's when that's when people are going to start chirping. I mean, they just took Baltimore. two of three from Milwaukee. Yeah, but they. I mean, they have lost. I'm not paying. They have lost seven of twelve. This Baltimore, sounds like a man who stuck New with York. the Blue Jays. This stuck sounds like a man who stuck with the Blue Jays in the AL East, trying to drum I mean, up some Blue controversy. Jays, well, the Blue Jays are rinsed. The Blue Jays are <laughs> rinsed, and we'll get there. We'll get there. The Orioles, the Yankees, the Mets, and my Milwaukee Brewers. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm not feeling good about my my Blue Jays pick. <clears throat> if this is the regression for the Rays, I think they're going to be all right because they've outscored their opponents by six runs over this 12-game stretch. I, I mean, the opponents have been real, and I, I I don't think they were head and shoulders above every other team in Major League Baseball, and I think that's what this stretch is more about than, well, than anything else. I still think they're the class of the East. Um, this is just baseball. With the injuries this is baseball. Too. Yeah. This is baseball. We, we I mean, we, we thought that the Tampa Bay Rays, not we thought, I should say, it felt like the Tampa Bay Rays were never going to lose a game. It felt like it was about as clear cut as it could be over a two-week period and really started to creep into a month-long period. But after all of that excitement at the beginning of the season, all of that to say the Baltimore Orioles are two and a half games back. Mm-hmm. Two and a half back from the Tampa Bay Rays after the Rays yeah. won 30 I mean, that fucking to me just- straight games. Mm-hmm. That's that was going to be my segue to the Orioles and the Jays over the weekend. Mm. And that's to say the Baltimore Orioles. It's not just a cute little story anymore. This is a team that could win the fucking division this year when uh, the Tampa Bay Rays looked like they were going to cakewalk to 130 wins this season. You have the Baltimore Orioles who come into play on Monday at 31 and 16 and you've got the Rays at 34 and 14. Two and a half game lead. They've got I mean the run the run differential is laughable when you look at um the Baltimore Orioles have a plus 41 run differential. You look around the league, first place Minnesota Twins plus 43, okay? Plus 41 for the Orioles would be the best in the American League East if the Tampa Bay Rays didn't exist. Uh, Texas Rangers plus 108. That's pretty good. Uh, it would be the best run differential in the in the in the, uh, the NL Central plus 48 for the Dodgers. All relatively in the same neighborhood. And then you look at what the Tampa Bay Rays have done to this point: plus 124, plus 124. But I mean, you get for it's it's all it's a weird dynamic with Tampa because I think people are just like sick of them winning and doing well. But they should be the underdog, right? Like they have no financial assets whatsoever. They have a shitty ballpark. And despite all that, they're still succeeding. They have Tyler Glasnow has not pitched an inning for them yet because of injury. Uh, Jeffrey Springs, he's done for the year. Uh, (laughs) Drew Rasmussen, (laughs) he's fucking, he's toast. They've they've been dealt all these horrible hands, and yet despite all that, they're still a juggernaut. And for whatever reason, it's not even like they have loudmouth assholes on their team either. Like they don't have Harrison Bader walk around with <laughs> this fucking mouth guard. It looks like an asshole. They don't have a player like that on their team. But for whatever reason, everyone is just waiting on the Tampa Bay Rays downfall. Everyone. I don't get it. Like everyone should be like, you know what? Good for you, dude. Like you shouldn't be here, but you are good for you. But meanwhile, everyone's just like, fuck those motherfuckers. I, I, I don't get I'll it. I'll tell you why. 
Why? At least it's because they play the game differently. They they no. play the game in a way that, that uh. people don't understand. They play the game in a way that people don't like. But at the end of the day, it's all about the wins and losses, and they win more times than they lose, and they win more games than most teams, if not all of them. Well, that all of that is true about the winning. But if you're asking why I don't think people get behind them and root for them, it's because in a lot of ways they represent the absolute worst of modern day Major League Baseball in the complete stripping down of any any recognizable figure on a roster over a multi-year period. There's constant turnover. You never get attached to or able to root for anybody on the team. They don't pay their players anything. And frankly, they are like, what are you rooting for if you're rooting yeah. for the Rays? You Let's are distill it down for, to that. What are you, you rooting are, for? You are rooting for an analytical approach is what you are rooting for. You are rooting for a competitive analytical approach to competing in the game of baseball. That's what excites you if you are a Tampa Bay Rays fan because of everything you just said, Jay Hay. Now, if they start to keep players, that's a different story. But for sure, in, until that starts to happen, when you think about what makes a team successful, it's typically their ideology and it's how they cultivate talent, how they groom talent and bring it up and how that talent impacts their roster at the moment. So what excites you is not marquee players that have been strongholds in this organization for years and years and years. It is quite literally the process of which players are brought in, used and then redistributed either into retirement or into free agency or into the league <laughs> otherwise. But you're or to the hospital, dude. Well, hey, that's part of retirement, you know, but right. that was that's it. That's what you're excited about. Like, go raise the For analyticals. Sure. It's the difference between them and the Padres, like the Rays can't lose 20 games over 500, even with the bad stretch since the perfect game anniversary which everyone's talking about or the Padres who have been so bad, so disappointing for like a few years now and still sell out like this whole weekend. They sold out all their games coming off like an eight game losing Joe. streak and everyone's pissed at them, yep. but they sold out. How about, how about this coming into yesterday's baseball games? The San Diego Padres, I believe had scored one more run than the Oakland A's. <laughs> the San Diego Padres, that lineup, that roster, all them millions on millions on millions had up until yesterday, I believe, produced one more run than the lineup of the Oakland A's. It sold out their whole weekend series. And I, I think what I'm nervous about, since you guys brought up those two teams specifically, is that the Rays' success, even more than it already has been used for this purpose, and the Padres' lack of success so far this season are going to be held up by someone with a national platform as saying, here is an example of why spending in baseball is a waste of time, or you shouldn't, you shouldn't run, uh, sign big free agents or run high salaries or something in baseball. And I think that's going, ultimately, over the long term, I think that approach is really, really bad for growing the game uh, and for marketing stars and for elevating stars and putting people on the national platform. Because if but 30 teams operate and look like the Tampa Bay Rays. First of all, not all of them are going to be successful because it's a zero sum game, but also you are stripping all of the personality out of Major League Baseball and all of the investment in the team. If you can divorce investing in the roster from success on the field, then that is a bad thing for Major League Baseball. Well, in my and opinion. do you not think though, Jay Hey, do you not think that that has been the that has been the balancing act? That has been the high wire act that Commissioner Manfred and every other commissioner of every other league has to walk. Is how do I walk the line between not acknowledging what is bad for our sport and also acknowledging without acknowledging that we all know when this thing starts, there's going to be 10 folks, roughly five, maybe 10 team wise who are actually in this thing, who are actually competitive. So think about leagues, right? Kind of like you think about minor league baseball. What are the minor leagues for? Let me let you in on a little secret here. They're not for all the guys who have been drafted. 
No, no, uh uh-uh. They're not for the late rounders. That's not what the minor leagues are for, people. The minor leagues are for the first five rounds of talent. So they can play against other players and eventually get to the big leagues and become commodities that are used at the elite level in this game. That's what the minor leagues are for. If there were no minor leagues, how would we grow this game? How would we have this talent to disperse amongst the league? We wouldn't. So we need this. So every commissioner knows there's viable options and there are non-viable options in our league. And the larger markets, those are the teams that represent the the main characters in this act, in this theater. And the other teams, the smaller markets, well, we can't let everybody operate like the Rays, but we have to have a Rays around. You get it? We can't turn the Red Sox into the Rays. We can't turn the Yankees into the Rays. We can't turn the Padres into the Rays. We can't do that because that would be bad for baseball. We we can have one, can't we? I actually disagree with you. I think think it is the goal of the 30 owners and Rob Manfred to flatten the curve as much as absolutely possible and get as many of these teams operating in a Rays-like fashion, even if it's scaled a little bit differently per franchise. I think they want all of the teams operating this way. And I don't think it's a coincidence that Hank and Hal Steinbrenner have, or whoever's running that team, have run the Yankees pulled out. Uh, in the way that they have, that mm-hmm. the Dodgers have run their team in the way that they have, and that we that the way that the Padres run their team is so against the grain within Major League Baseball that it it it, it takes over an entire offseason worth of conversation. I just want to say one thing. I am not so naive as to think that all of these teams don't view players as assets and that this game is a business. What my complaint is, as it relates to the Rays, is that they do it in a way that's basically the curtain is pulled back. It's like yeah. the, the it's like I'm watching there is no there is no mystique. There so is you'd rather no, be like I, I I need to be able to like want to be lied to. It, yeah, I need to be able to induce okay. myself into something of a state of disbelief about, hey, this is a sport. This is what I'm watching. This is fun. This is competition. Mm-hmm. It's about competition and winning. And like, if you strip it down to a point where you can't kind of fool yourself into that, I think that's corrosive to the game's interests overall. Sure. Well, to my whole point, if you're a Tampa Bay Rays fan, to an extent, you feel like you're a fan of a business model and For you're sure. not necessarily a fan of a sports team. And I, and, and I always no just question. try to remind fans that these sports teams are still a part of somebody else's portfolio and they make them money. And so the winning and losing that we're married to as sports fans, that is very, that, well, I don't want to say very low, but that is not near the top of the business priority list as it is the fan priority list, right? What's most important as a fan? Wins and losses. We want championships. We want rings. Well, from a business entity standpoint, we want to make money. And if championships bring us X amount, that's fabulous. But if operating like at the base level also brings us money, well, can we all look around and realize what my return on investment is? That's how we make money. We don't spend and we get. So there you go, Jared. That's why people aren't behind the fucking Rays. Mm. Got it. Got it. Sorry, I'm just arguing with Matt Strom. Huge pussy. Yikes. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> why 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 Stromy? Why Stromy? Stromy's a good guy. No, he's not. He's a pussy. Uh why don't so, you like Stromy? What happened? So uh Caleb, again, Caleb Wart, who I is in my organization regrettably, sucks. Guy's fucking terrible. Okay. And so in spring training, I was like, I'm gonna support this guy because no one else will. So I just go over the top supporting this guy. He's given up fucking home runs. He's given up uh, eight run leads every single night. And I'm like, you know what? He's still a good guy. So all I did was support him. This morning I wake up and I'm blocked on Twitter by Caleb Ort. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I put out a video explaining the situation. I was like, this guy sucks. And I was the only guy to support him. And he blocked me for it. Matt Strom just tweeted me and he said, no major league baseball player sucks at baseball. End of story. And I quote tweeted and I said, well, he's a minor league baseball player. He's in fucking triple A, pal. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> so, well, and Matt Strom, Matt Strom followed me on Twitter first. And then he he just unfollowed me for saying that Caleb Ort sucks when Caleb Ort sucks. I'm sure that they were probably buddies last year. Well, I don't, the Red I don't, Sox bullpen. I, I wouldn't. 
think it's for the Caleb Ort sucks. I, I think it's that's definitely what it was. He, no, he because just, what he understands is that he is right. Major League Baseball players just don't suck at baseball. That's just a fact. There's just Major League Baseball players who that are aren't not good. playing well, who aren't playing well. Yeah, that, I mean, and those are facts as well. So he he's probably just not interested in the semantic argument and knowing that you will fire off what you did. Oh, well, he's in the minor leagues, so checkmate. He he's not a major. And well, you actually, know what I can't stand? You know what I can't stand? People that take like chunk to like tongue in cheek stuff and then respond to it seriously. I fucking hate those people. Well, I, like I, that's I, what Matt Strom just did. Oh, he's he's in the big league, so it's impossible to no, suck no. at baseball. L- listen, like, listen. You you just took something tongue in cheek and responded to it seriously. You're a you're a clown. You're a loser for doing. Well, that. and and you responded similarly to his response, right? Yeah, because if you want to go that route, we can go that route. You you want to say, oh, he doesn't suck because he's a major league baseball player. Well, guess what? He's fucking in the minors. He's not a major league baseball player. But his initial take is accurate. That he's yeah, but it's like no shit, player. dude. You no shit. A guy that suck. made it to the big leagues isn't isn't bad at baseball. Yeah, like, that's uh, all we saying. get it, dude. But what a loser thing to say. Like, stay out of it. This isn't about you. Well, it's a teammate, right? A former teammate. He's with oh, Philly now. Okay, and who knows? Maybe they're good. Maybe they're good friends. And he's like, look, he's like, look, I'm not gonna like you. So then, pile on the so what are you fucking? What is he even mad about? Like, I all I did, Jake. Jake, was there a bigger Caleb Ort supporter on fucking planet Earth than me? You're the number one Caleb Ort guy. <laughs> like, what a wild thing to block someone over. This guy is this guy is way too big of a supporter of mine. Like, I only have one <laughs> in the world outside of my own family, probably. This guy is the only guy that supports me. Block. All right, fine. Was fine, there, you lost your one supporter then. Was there no, was there any, like, I don't know Nothing. the history between you and Ort. Was there any, like, back and forth, like... no. Never met him, never talked to him. Was nothing. there any tongue in cheek defense of Mr. Ort on your behalf? Of course, he's awful. Everything that I said was tongue in cheek. Like I, instead, like I made the decision. So you can't beat the drum that you're guy. his biggest supporter when it's all tongue in cheek. Like if it's all what can you say, <laughs> Dallas? What can you say about a guy that uh, fucking sucks? I, so instead uh, of just instead much. of crushing him, instead mm-hmm. of crushing him, I was like, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to crush guys in the league. I don't want to crush guys on my own team. So I so stu- I will like, fake support the anno- this guy, and then when he gets the, upset about yes. that, I'll get upset. What do you want me to do? Let's say nothing. Would you rather me crush <laughs> no, you, just... or would you rather me be the guy that blindly defends you no matter what? What would you rather <laughs> me do? What's worse, you as a former player, Dallas? Say, say I'm oh, an Oakland A's that... fan, and Dallas Braden goes out there and he has an ERA of seven and a half. Would you mm-hmm. rather me say Dallas Braden sucks, or would you rather me be like, you know what, guys? Like Dallas is, he'll be back. Like he's fine. He'll be okay. Good guy though. Like, what would you prefer? Of course. Do you I'm want st- me to do? Uh, do you want me to honestly? Do you want of, me to honestly answer yeah, that? Do you yes, want an honest yes. answer to that? Yes. If yeah. I was playing for the Red Sox and I had somebody uh-huh. like you, a super fan who does what they do when it comes to the Red Sox, and I understood your personality, which I think is fairly simple to do, um, I would look at that support and know exactly where it's coming from, know exactly what kind of support that is. Extremely hollow, extremely fragile, a house of cards of support, really. And so... I probably wouldn't think anything of it. I would just keep it moving. But at no point in time would I ever think that you were genuine about the support I was receiving. So if I did have a reaction to that lack of genuineness from you, I would then look at you like you're a buffoon going, we both know where this is coming from. I've responded to it. And now you want to look at me like I'm the asshole for it. I don't know if that's really going to work out. I, I I disagree entirely. Like well, I'm sure it, you I think do. You're, if, you're the root of he, it. <laughs> but if if a player sucks, and you, there are a lot of mean motherfuckers out there that'll say horrible things about players that are not playing well. Absolutely. I chose instead to to take the positive route. It's not positive and, though. It is positive. It was Hashtag fake. Support, support, it was- support, support. Support Dallas. It was fake. That is positive. That's the most positive word in the world. Support. No, and I'm just doing it every fucking night for this piece of shit that has a seven ERA. It was hollow, man. It meant nothing and he knew it. All right. So then I should have just said nothing. I should have just ignored that he existed because I'm not if I tell don't you how to tro- I'm not gonna tell you how to troll your own team. You've been I'm doing not, a great I'm job. I'm not trolling a guy. 
I'm not trolling the guy. I'm I'm fucking supporting the guy. No, like I, you, <laughs> Dallas, you you don't you don't have a friend ever in your life where you're like this guy's a fuck up, but I support him. Like he's my boy. I gotta support him. Like I that's have, how I feel about the Red Sox. The, like this guy sucks, but I gotta support him. He's on my team. I gotta support him. I, I just don't. Right, know let's just that's focus going. on what we need to focus on. Let's. We need, the important thing is we, we need gotta, to try to get Caleb or back into the majors. No. Okay. He's pitching great. No. He's nope. five appearances, zero R, ERA and AAA. Okay. I don't think he's throwing a he's pitch yet. Five appearances, <laughs> zero ERA and AAA. He's not as bad as people say. Jared has supported him. I've seen the tweets. I like uh, nonstop Board. support. Like I don't <laughs> want to crush. MLB players. I don't want to do that. So instead, I support the guy, and apparently, I'm the asshole for that. Jay, hey, what do you? Well, what what's, you your do now? what's your stance, Jay? Hey, if it, like, am I an asshole for supporting this guy no matter what, or should I have just said that he sucked and that's the right thing to do? Uh, be a mean person. I don't want to be a mean person. How am I the villain for choosing not to be mean? I think grinding the grievance into dust is the way to go. That's what I always do, and that's what I would recommend you do. This is just the beginning of Caleb Ort <laughs> drama. I'm have to now I'm more pissed than Matt Strom. Like, bro, you <laughs> followed me. I wasn't even following you. The fuck? Like, he followed me. I followed him back. I was like, all right, yeah, you were on the team last year. Whatever. Like, I'll extend the olive branch. And then he wants to, like, fucking trick. Get the fuck out of here, Matt Strom. <laughs> You're so angry. I don't want to be like this, Dad. I know. I don't, I, well, then don't all be All I want to do is... All I want to do is support guys and be positive. And then you got fucking Tommy Tough Nuts with his fucking his fucking Matt Riddle hair coming in here trying to chirp at me. Wrong. Mistake. Blue Moon. 3.84 3.8 whip. FIP and AAA. Mm. Um, hey, you know what? Soon. Good for him. A reunion. Some beers can say that they're brewed for baseball, but only Blue Moon is brewed by baseball. <laughs> Beer and baseball just go together like Caleb Orton triple A. Like Matt Strom in a barbershop. And no beer goes better than the one that is literally born in a ballpark. Blue Moon was created at Coors Field in Denver, Colorado. It's the natural choice for opening day and all season long. I'm probably going to need to crack open a Blue Moon after this just to just to relax. Just to enjoy my day after after these people try and ruin my day for no reason. I'm sorry for inconveniencing you with my love. But I'll just spend the rest of my day with some Blue Moons. With its refreshing flavor, with Valencia orange peel for a subtle sweetness and hints of coriander, Blue Moon Belgian-style wheat ale is a one-of-a-kind beer that's made brighter. It's carefully crafted and full-flavored with refreshing notes and a smooth, creamy finish. Blue Moon was brewed by baseball to give you a dose of nostalgia and get you excited for the new season. Why strike out with the same old beer when you can get something that's one-of-a-kind? Its bold flavor, bright explosion of color, and iconic orange slice ritual guarantees a one-of-a-kind beer experience perfect for spring weather. Best served with its signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful, bright color. A beer this good only comes around once in a blue moon, but you can enjoy it all season long. Bring the ballpark to you with Blue Moon Belgian style wheat ale. It's a one of a kind every time. Check out shop.bluemoonbrewingcompany.com for beer and baseball merch or visit get.bluemoonbeer.com slash rocket to find Blue Moon delivery options. That is get.bluemoonbeer.com slash rocket. Blue Moon made brighter. Celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden Colorado Ale. Um, okay. Need of that. Uh, it is. Uh, should we do the uh, the parlay right now? I mean, it's a, yeah. I, I'm I'm locked in. I'm ready to go. I feel pretty good about my pick as well. Um, I Joseph, did, did you pick. did you narrow down your uh, your of your five picks? Which winner you want to go with? Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna go with three today. You're all, what does that mean? Three parlay picks. What does that mean? I don't know how, how we want to do it. I know mine are going to hit it. Maybe we can just do a six legger or some two of you guys could just give up your pick for the week and I'll just do three. What do you guys think about that? 
<laughs> no, I, I'm gonna win. Like I'm, I'm into <laughs> winning it money. Feels like so biting gonna... off a lot first. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, can't, I, I, I think can't. one I can right do... first. Yeah, before we hand it over to you completely. <laughs> yeah, I could do. All right, maybe I'll just do two. Okay. Okay. Who do I go first? I go first. I yeah, tell everyone first. my pick. Go first. I'm gonna go around Ronald Acuna Jr. I, you can't. You, you can't even take him for hits because that's how many hits he gets. If you take him for hits, you gotta go two hits, one and a half hits. So what you do instead of going for hits, you go total bases, one and a half. Ronald Acuna total bases. You over got Ronnie hitting a half. double. I think he hits a leadoff double, and uh, we don't even have to sweat it. I like that, Joe. I like that. I, I'll follow Wait. up and make it super simple. Um, it will be Ruiz stealing a bag. He's going to steal 60 more of them later this year, so just get on the train now. I will do my best to pick a different spot here because I know it can get a little boring just rolling Ruiz out there time and time again, but I have done very well with Ruiz running his ass off all across the bases, and you should too. I care about you, so I want you to do well. <laughs> <laughs> that's not tongue and cheek i know you're gonna get a lot of tongue and cheek on this podcast not from yeah. me not from me mm. i mm. care i really care i genuinely mm. care do you i do that's interesting i care too and you know what dallas sometimes karen all it does is get you in trouble <laughs> so i guess i guess i guess what the world is telling me today is just be an asshole just be yourself. Just be mean. Just be mean spirited. Just say fucked up shit to, to <laughs> players that are all these pussies are going to fucking cry about it anyway. Hey, what? if you don't have anything nice to say, though, you know what you could always do? What? Not say anything at all. I mean, it's literally my job to say something. I so. thought we were doing the parlay. Yeah, we are. This is, this is we are. Thank you, Jay. Hey, thank you. Bring yeah. it back. Bring it back. Yeah. Do we have does, does DraftKings have odds on the next time that Matt Strom is going to fucking cry on Twitter? I'll take the old. <laughs> uh, wow. Are we waiting for Jake to look that up or bitter? Yeah, Jake, can bitter. you look that up? So bitter. <laughs> About My what? God. But what? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what has got you fired up this morning. I don't know why you want to jump in the middle of Matt Strom shit right now because he has a friend, but man, I mean, I think we would all be so lucky to have friends like that. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it would be nice to have a friend that would take your side when you've been wronged. Well, it see, nice but what I'm learning, it. Jared, is I was ready to fire back at Stromy, but what I'm learning is you don't appreciate that kind of stuff as, as a friend. So I'm going to lay out and I'm going to let you know, you don't need my help anyway. But I mean, this no, maybe really, no. He just got he just got owned. Just got Where owned. I would I, I would help, but no ratio. <laughs> so what's Whatever. your parlay like? Um, I am also going to be dipping into that Braves Dodgers game. Uh, you've got Gavin Stone on the mound for the Dodgers. Uh, has only made one big league start. Did not go particularly well. Four innings, eight hits, five runs, four earned, couple walks, and he's a right-hander. You know who? You know who does really well against right-handed pitching? Ozzy Albies. Yeah, he actually does do really well. Um, but so does Ronald Acuna Jr. Why did I see earlier that uh, Ozzy led the majors against right-handed pitching, but I don't see him now. I was going to pick Ozzy Alves. Anyways, um, Ronald Acuna Jr. is hitting 346 with a 10-23 OPS against right-handed pitching. Um. So I'm going to go with Ronald Acuna Jr. to get a hit as part of this parlay. Jake, are you adding a leg here? I am not. I'm retiring from the parlay. We're moving to a four-leg parlay, so the odds aren't like plus 1,500 every time. Okay. That makes sense. 
<clears throat> um okay so what's the what's the final what's the final parlay i didn't give mine mine's rangers oh money line against the pirates tonight dane dunning 169 era against luis ortiz young young arm i'm also fading young arms there it is rangers minus 130 mm. <clears throat> Is there any way we can get that those odds by the end of the pod, Jake? Yeah, I'll shoot them out right now. Should get a response pretty quick. Okay. All right. There you go. That is the... Well, can we get a recap of what that is? Ruiz to get a steal. Rangers money line. Acuna over 1.5 total bases. And what was yours? Wait, did Joey also go Acuna? Mm-hmm. Total bases. Oh, all right. Fuck. I missed that. Sorry. We can I'm do the... both. I mean, if you want to copy, it's not a big deal. I, I, it's all right. I'm going to do Matt Olson. Tell me I'm the worst. I'm the worst at picking, but you copy my pick. Oh, I'm going to go Matt Olson. You copy me. Oh, it makes Matt sense. Olson, two plus total bases. Matt Olson is third in the big leagues in slugging percentage against right-handed pitching. It goes Aaron Judge. Uh, Nolan Gorman and Matt Olson. So Matt Olson, two plus total bases is my pick. Doubles machine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Aaron Hicks got designated for assignment. And how did that make you feel? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, because I care about the players and I don't like to kick them when they're down. Or when things are going poorly, it made me feel sad. Yeah. Felt bad for the guy. It's not like he's out there trying to suck. I I hear that you are so supportive. They're going to change the name from Jockstrap to a Carabas. Are you wearing a Carabas? Mm. The best supporter around. I don't know that I said anything supportive of Aaron Hicks, <laughs> but I, I don't know that I ever, because he was another guy that it, I, I remember when we did the spikes up to our knees, the only <laughs> yeah. guy that wouldn't come on the bus. So I, you I never said anything. Yeah. Once you, <laughs> once you get on my petty list, then like there's no coming back from and, that. And Colin McHugh, pure Chris Archer. Yeah. Colin McHugh, Chris Archer, <laughs> Matt Strom, Caleb Ort, Pablo Sandoval. Uh, Clay Buckholtz is the only player to go on and come off. That's it. Um, and now Aaron Hicks is on my petty list. Hate you forever. Will forever hold a grudge. Um, so yeah, well, it comes a time in every ball player's life, Jared, that, that what, that you're not as good as you once were, or and maybe they, in Kale Bort's case, you were never good. Pretty good. Pretty good baseball mm -hmm. player. Kale Bort. Yeah. I mean, maybe not having a great run at the big league level, but overall yeah. pretty good baseball player. I would venture to sure. guess just as a guy who got to the big leagues, mm. he would be good. Mm -hmm. I tell you, we bring up Caleb Ort one more time. We can take the ratings for this podcast and drag it down to the bottom of the fucking ocean. <laughs> oh, Caleb Ort. Jeez. Davy Jones locker. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Is anyone surprised by the Aaron Hicks DFA? I, I, I don't know that. I would have called it inevitable, but it wasn't super surprising. Yankee fans were like, oh, my God, I can't believe it finally happened. They actually did it. Why wouldn't they? He's been awful. Yeah, I think it was just yeah, surprising was surprised. based on the the fact he had, what, two full seasons after this one remaining. Like, I think yes. it's just yeah, like that money is not going to impact the Yankees. I shouldn't think, but I think it's, it is reasonably unusual to see a guy released with that much time remaining on his contract, even if the stats justify it or have justified it for a little while. Although I I found the Yank the at least the Yankees fans that showed up on my timeline just debasing themselves um over the Aaron Hicks release. I think I saw what did Hub say it was Christmas morning. Didn't this team <laughs> used to win titles? Yeah. Pathetic. Well, a long time ago, yeah. Yeah. All dead right, money well, is dead money. I think we'll see Hicks pop up somewhere though. He'll sign on. Willie? He's awful. Yeah, but like 
he, he doesn't do anything well. No, not really. He he can't hit. I mean, he was hitting, which is ironic. Like he was hitting that last week before they designated him for assignment. Um, I bet Cleveland but, takes a look. They're outfielders. Well, I mean, the Yankees are footing the bill for the next two and a half years. But if you bring that guy on, like I think we've had these conversations about well, then, valuing a roster spot, how much financially, like if you could quantify a dollar amount, how much is a roster spot worth to a franchise? Like they, like Madison Bumgarner, we're seeing it with him. No one wants to touch that. Once the Red Sox designate Corey Kluber for assignment, who's going to want him? He sucks. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt Strom. I'm sorry. No big league player. It sucks. Oh. <laughs> He's not good. Leave Baseball clue, savant page. Leave the clue butt out of this. <laughs> I, I respect his career, but he is P.U. Stinks. Well, Stinks. this is it for Hicks. He finished 22nd in the 2018 AL MVP vote. So, Damn. That's not nothing. Never forget. It's not nothing. That is quite quite the legacy to leave behind. Almost <laughs> almost 2018 uh, Cy Young. Or no, MVP Cy Young. <laughs> MVP. And uh, almost came on the spikes up tour bus. Almost. A, a career of almosts for Aaron Hicks. Um <laughs> Yeah, a lot of balls that he almost caught, too, but ultimately didn't. Not, see, look, I didn't want to be a hateful, spiteful person today. I woke up this morning in a good mood. Like, this all started when I texted Dallas my chicken fingers over the weekend, and he just started slandering me for no reason. I was excited to just show the guy my chicken fingers, and he just like, are you going to grow up someday? Like that's when it started. I've I've been super positive recently. I have been nothing but positive, recently. and it's like the the world has wanted to change me, and I don't know why. The universe wants me to go back to my villain origins, and I'm just sitting here trying to support people, trying to spread positivity. You can't you can't let negative hey, uh, can, influences get you down. Can we talk? Can we uh, have you shared that picture of chicken fingers with the rest of the world? Because that no, is no. quite possible. That was a Dallas exclusive. That is the <laughs> saddest. The saddest collection of fucking chicken fingers I have ever seen. It's not that bad. No, it's uh, it's that bad. Do you remember what I wrote to you? <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad. I feel like it's that I bad. Feel like Look slander. At, no, come it's on. It's terrible. It is fuck. One no. of them looks like it's flipping me off. Yeah, the one in the very back oh looks God. like it's flipping me off. Come on. And then the one in the middle there. That that is an actual. That's actually a prawn. From Long John still, Silvers. Yeah, are those still alive. <laughs> That's a it's a it's a it's just a good it's a good batch of chicken tendies. I no. I wouldn't grade them very high. Like when I looked at them, I, Ellen was over, obviously. And I looked at her and I, before I even took a bite, I was like, I don't know that I'm gonna love these chicken tenders. Like I, I can get a gauge on a good chicken tender just by looking at it. I looked at these and I was like, I know I'm not gonna love these. Nope. There's a chance that I like them, but we're going to be in the hate to like moderately like. We're not going to love these tendies. There's no flat, way. flat tendies. Just didn't look good. Just didn't look good. Um, so that's that. That's talking chicken tenders. That's talking tendies. Um, yeah. You know who wouldn't let you down in that department? Omaha Steaks. No. God, no. No. And Father's Day is coming up. So obviously you're listening right now. And you're like, well, Father's Day gift for yourself. Maybe tell the missus. Father's Day gift for your dad. If you're fortunate enough that he's still in your life. You've got Omaha Steaks waiting to just give you a great deal for a Father's Day gift. And with Father's Day right around the corner, what do you give to the man who has everything? Well, the Father's Day experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy to put a smile on a, on the big guy's face this summer with hand-selected packages. Head on over to omahasteaks.com. Use the promo code DEAD, D-E-A-D, at checkout and get $30 off your qualifying order. Packages can include uh, fork tender bacon-wrapped filet mignons or other gourmet grillables like the air-chilled boneless chicken breasts, burgers, jumbo franks, and many more favorites. Don't forget to save room for dessert. 
Most packages uh, come with four delicious caramel apple tartlets. Getting hungry just thinking about it. Do you say, Dallas, do you say caramel or caramel? I say caramel because I'm normal. Jay Hay? I'm a big fan of produce, uh, pronouncing all the letters and all the syllables, so it's caramel. <laughs> caramel? Yeah, of course. Joseph? No, it's caramel. Yeah. Never said it, never heard of it. <laughs> never <laughs> heard of it! <laughs> Jake, what do you got? Caramel or caramel? I go caramel. Caramel. He said I caramel? Say I haven't heard Jake. It's caramel. It's not caramel. 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 I mean, if you caramel. go into an ice, if you oh, go into an ice cream store. I say, hey, and I speak the Queen's English. It's fucking caramel. <laughs> if you go, <laughs> fuck if you go into an ice cream store and <laughs> order caramel, loser. they'll be like, yeah. oh, oh, what would you like it? Would you like it malted? Would you like me yeah. to send you back to the 1950s with your order, too? Jesus, grow fucking up. Caramel. Oh, is it caramel flavored? Because I love caramel. I'm not Actually, a chocolate guy as much as I'm a caramel guy. Shout out butterscotch. <laughs> Better than them all. Mm. Jay, big <laughs> nougat guy, too, I bet, right? <laughs> fucking give you some nougat. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Fucking fire. caramel. It's fucking caramel. Wrong. It comes with four delicious caramel <laughs> art apple tartlets. <laughs> also, check out the other hand selected packages that are guaranteed to make dad's day. Because if there's one thing we know, it's that dads want steak. Whether he's your father, father in law, father figure, he's a guy who always ready to step up when you need him the most. This Father's Day, show him the love. With only the only gift that's unforgettable as he is the malt watering perfection of Omaha steaks from perfectly aged, oh so tender steaks to hand selected gift packages. Omaha steaks makes it easy to give dad what he really wants. Order today and get $30 off with the promo code dead. And with every purchase, it's backed by their unconditional money back guarantee. Uh, minimum order may be required. See the uh, site for details. Omaha steaks, the world's best beef, naturally aged. <laughs> for the ultimate in tenderness, juiciness, and flavor. Omaha Steaks knows exactly what dads want, and that is steaks. Get it. I love steaks. it. Steaks. Get, get it for your dad, your dad's dad, your dad's dad's dad, or, or <laughs> you know, whoever that guy is that's always there when you wake up in the morning. Like, you get it for him, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you reminded me of the fucking... <laughs> oh, God. The movie Kingpin, where the, yeah. the kids <laughs> talk, he's like, Sometimes when I wake up in the morning, Big Earn's still there. Because <laughs> Big Earn is fucking splitting that 10 7 on your madre, homie. <laughs> oh, man. Big Earn just rolling that rose ball all the way down Mama's alley, bud. That's why Big Earn's still there in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so get him some Omaha steaks too. <laughs> uh, oh, you know who can really use some steaks? The guy who's been taking you to Little League practice. I know you're not on first name basis and shit, but he's hungry. <laughs> Help him out. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas, you like steaks? Love steaks. Yeah, love steaks. Maybe I, maybe I'll get you some steaks for fun. <laughs> Please do. They will. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> um. You guys have any other? I mean, we made the we made it the Rays discussion when I was trying to make it the O's discussion, but the Baltimore Orioles did sweep the Toronto Blue Jays. No, I think it's the single. I think it's the single most significant story in baseball through <clears throat> whatever we're at seven weeks of the season. Um, well, then yeah. you know what, Jared, you're going to take some time to put some fucking respect on Dean oh, Kramer's God. name. Is no. what needs Dean to happen. Kramer sucks too. No, you we're not kiss gonna. my ass. <laughs> you kiss my ass. The last four starts for Dean Kramer. You want to know how things have gone? They've won every fucking uh, game. They've won all okay, of those starts. What are what are his number? What's the FIP look like for the cream machine? 
Uh, well, I'll tell you what his ERA <laughs> is during that time. How about we start there? 1.96. Right. And if you want to get lost in other numbers, that's your prerogative. But okay, that that right there, like don't like you know, fifth, three three and a half, slightly north of okay, three and yeah. a half. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, he's fine. he's lowered his ERA from eight ninety seven. Look, 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 look he's see, down you're, to four. You're zooming well, no, out. You're zooming I'm giving, out, and I'm looking to I'm, zoom in. I'm zooming in. I'm zooming in. I'm zooming well, in. He's he's been a lot better. I, credit to Dean Kramer, the cream machine. He's thank you. He's been a lot better. That's all I needed. Just put some fucking mm-hmm. respect on the two oh nine er. That's all. No doubt. All right. Oh, I was part of the run. We were talking about the cream machine from the 209. <laughs> yeah, that makes it's part of the run, baby. Part of oh, the run. he's from fucking Stockton. Oh, yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? Oh, yeah, that was a side note. But yeah, if you want to talk about that, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. Dallas. That's right. That's Come right. Yo, there are tough. very. I know we were going to try and be positive about the Orioles, but I'm just going to take it where I want to go. Uh, no. There might not be a batter that's colder than Jorge no. Mateo right now. Uh, <laughs> no. I mean, it's almost hard to be <laughs> this ice cold. He has a 261 OPS in May. That's bad. Really? 261. Wow. Uh, uh, I just experienced something that I had no idea was even like we just had a player on our team get a hit for the first time in a day game this year. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I saw that. Was that Tony Kemp? It was TK. It was. Yeah. And TK will be the first to tell you, like, buddy, yeah, I fucking know. I, I get it. Like, if the sun's out, uh, it's things have not been going well if, 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 the, if the sun is out. So turn the lights off, put a roof over it. Fuck, good to go. But yeah, yeah nice, to, it, nice to get yeah. TK off the schneid there. Holy shit. <laughs> he was, he's two for 46 now in day games. He's hitting 0 43. With a 197 OPS in 10 games this season. And just both of, those... of the hits are in his last two games. Last yeah. two day, day games. <clears throat> wow. Just that's freakish. fucking nuts. It, it, was, it was astonishing. I mean, that's not like, again, that, that kind of shit, those kind of freaky runs yeah. can happen to anybody, can happen to literally anybody. I've just, I've seen crazy stuff. Like, like I remember a guy, CeCe, Chris Carter, <clears throat> who... Like I would legitimately put this dude's raw power up against anybody I've ever seen, anybody. And he started his career like oh for thirty six or something with like twenty eight strikeouts. Hmm. So he like was not good at all, but just absolutely hammered the ball, hammered the ball. Uh, the the record, so to speak for lowest batting average by a qualified batter in a single season during day games is a man named Tully Sparks. Oh, Tully. In 1907, went three for 89 in day games, 034. So, hey, TK's not out of the woods yet. No, he'll be just fine. He'll be just fine. <laughs> oh, all right. He's going to be just fine. Actually, Tully yeah. Sparks has two of the three worst seasons so I think if we could go back in time, maybe something was going on with Tully Sparks' eyesight, maybe <laughs> something like that. Like, <laughs> could it have been complete- the patch he was wearing? <laughs> he went over. He hit 0-34 in 1907 during gay- day games. Came back the next year in 1908 and hit 0-52 during day games. What a fucking oh. stretch, man! Can no, you, you imagine know hey, those two seasons? Jay, like, uh, can we get that? Can we get the park adjusted numbers? Because I believe Old Tully was playing in a stadium that uh, the home plate was was facing west, and you know, late games, the sun setting in his eyes. That's uh, is that interesting? A- All right, somebody else talk. I'm going to look into this for final thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great! That is fucking oh. outstanding, Old Tully. Yeah. That's tough. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I just got a, a Snapchat from a uh, player that this goes back to one of the conversations. I can't remember if it was this podcast or another one um, about playing in the cold and when pitchers go out there and they suck and it's like 43 degrees and like misting and everyone's like, what the fuck? And you just want to say, you don't want to be that guy. But it, there is validity to it, unlike dumbass Matt Strom that's like, well, no one in the big league sucks. But try to throw a baseball when it's 43 degrees and raining out. Like, just go out there. 
and and do it in a t-shirt. Don't go out there with your fucking layers on and all that shit. Like do it the way and it's it's hard. And you just you lose that human perspective. This dude just sent me a Snapchat. He's like he was, uh the caption was looking slider got 95 and it was just a like melon sized purple welt on his fucking uh his love handle and I mean, Matt, like that must suck. So like that's going to hurt for a long time. And baseball is every single day. So like we just think that, uh, you know, you go out there and it's like, oh, he got hit by a pitch and you don't think about it. He's on base and your life goes on. Like imagine trying to play baseball when your fucking ribs are bruised and there's nothing no, no. you can say about it. <laughs> Fuck that. I always laugh. Like this is the one thing that I tip my cap to hitters on. When you foul a ball off your leg, you foul a ball off your foot. Those are things where if you do it hard enough, those those don't go away. Like those lumps and those indentations, those don't go away. Those are with you forever. Poor Vita, homie, for life. And imagine lining a fucking 104 mile an hour foul ball off your shin or then off the top of your foot. And we see guys, this happens to them twice, maybe even three times in an at bat where they end up hitting the same leg or the same area of the foot, and then they got to go out and they got to fucking hit. They got to stay in the at-bat. It happened to Tony Kemp yesterday. He fucking scorched a ball off the top of his foot and was like, I don't think I can even fucking stand up right now. This shit hurts so bad. And it was perfect because I started talking about how I said, and I'll tell you right now, for me as a pitcher, what I always like to do is go off speed and get a good idea after that of just how comfortable a guy was on his front foot. And literally, as I said, how comfortable a guy is on his front foot, our camera had the shot of Tony Kemp touching down on his front foot. And you could see his face. He was like, ah, like, fuck, that hurts. And he had to go walk it off a little. So I, I, I've always been like, you know what? All, all bullshit aside, as dumb as hitters are, it takes some it takes a fucking nutsack to just be like, yeah, you know what? That's a that's insurmountable pain I'm feeling right now. Let's get ready for the two two pitch. Mm. I uh, <clears throat> a little update here. I'm getting some text messages about this Strom and Ort situation <laughs> uh -huh. from, from wait is guys, this podcast streaming uh, live? <laughs> uh, yes. Well, I mean, it's on Twitter. I got this I'm is all kidding. unfolding on Twitter, and. Uh, <clears throat> Someone said, just an absolute death wish right here. Just got to be smarter. It just cannot happen. <laughs> it's called feel. You can't teach it. I mean, what, what listen, you... I know Strom's your guy, but it does not seem like the general consensus is, has his back on this one. <laughs> and I, you know, I, here's the thing, Dallas, which is crazy. I thought I was your guy. No, I thought, no, you no, know, no, no. I think you've misinterpreted all. Like, I, I wasn't. There's no, mm. um, I wasn't defending mm. Strami. I, I was saying I understand like what he, where he's coming from. Like in, mm. in, in the battle between you two, I am a, I, I am a bystander. I just, I always have to rip well, you. I don't it, think you should be a bystander. You, you, he's defending Caleb Ort, who sucks because he was a former teammate. Sure. You're my current teammate. Well, I, I was defending you should, the. You should have this dude in a fucking headlock right now. <laughs> I'm defending the premise of a major league baseball player not uh. sucking by virtue of getting to the big leagues. You two mm -hmm. are arguing about his performance at the big league level right now, which right. undeniably is not good. So mm. you labeling Quite him bad. as a sucky major league baseball player <laughs> is accurate to an extent. But then I understand where Strom was coming from saying, look, you get to the fucking big leagues, you don't suck. And I would say, yeah, you're right. But also Stromy, when, when, when I had a fucking nine ERA, I couldn't look my grandmother in the eye and tell her that I was a quality major league baseball player at the time. I couldn't mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I understand. Yeah. I had, uh, I had some, some thoughts, some notes here on the hot streak that Ronald Acuna Jr. has been on. I'm starting to get a little I, I, I get in these and it's the Asperger's I've I'm self-diagnosed, but like I know that it's there. Uh, I'm getting fixated on fly ball distance. That's like my new kink. <laughs> I don't know why fly ball distance is my new kink. So I've been looking or it's it's hard to ignore. 
if you're watching the Braves on a nightly basis and you see Ronald Acuna Jr. hitting home run after home run and you look up and you're like, well, these are going pretty far. Um, the average fly ball distance on a home run this year is 395.2 feet. 395.2. Ronald Acuna Jr., his last five home runs are averaging 445 and a half feet. They're averaging almost, he's averaging almost 450 on his last five homers. That's which way goes back to, I believe, baseballs. May 10th. That is way <laughs> yeah. late baseballs. Yeah. He is crushing baseballs. The average exit velocity <clears throat> on, a, on a home run. The average exit velocity on a home run this season is 104.8 miles per hour. 104.8. Ronald Acuna Jr., his last five home runs, 112.8. He's averaging almost a buck 13 exit velocity on his last five home runs. The average exit velocity, I mean, it's... And on the season... On the season, his home runs overall are are buck eleven and a half. So I mean, like this this kick that he's been on, like the last five home runs that have been absolute piss missiles, like it's a tick up from what he's been doing the whole year. Not that they, like he, it's not like he has like twenty home runs, like it's a it's a whatever sample size, but uh, he is hitting mammos. Yeah, those balls are launched a hundred and or four four. Mm. That's fucking touched. Mm. Squaring yeah, it up. Great. <clears throat> MVP. Uh, Joseph, any thoughts? Yeah, no. Is, is there who if, hey. if if Ronald Acuna Jr. stays healthy, obviously he's the favorite for National League MVP. Who's the guy that poses the biggest threat to him winning? It's uh, a good question. Right now, it's not really a competition. Yeah, I mean, is there a closer second right now to be had? No, I I highly doubt that like that's going to take like a, a month of somebody turning it on to put themselves in a conversation what's happened before Kyle Schwarber hit like 50 sure. home runs in June one year yes he did I mean you can make a pretty compelling well, somebody's argument somebody's gonna get hot you can make a compelling argument that the what his closest comp comparable in terms of value in the NL so far has been his teammate Sean Murphy and Nobody is going to give Sean Murphy any MVP God, consideration over Ronald Acuna, and they probably shouldn't. But I mean, who who has been a better player in the Mo NL than Sean Murphy this year, other than Acuna? I, I can't name that. Person. How maybe Freddie how, Freeman? How has Marcus Simeon is leading the majors and wins above replacement? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, uh, so he's at least by Fangraphs, Acuna is leading it, but it's not much over Simeon. They're tied on B War. Yeah, Simeon gets a lot of credit for his defense, uh, and is doing that again this year. Yeah, as as he should. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to diminish it. It's just that's where. I mean, his best seasons have been driven by some pretty insane defensive performance, in terms of WAR and stuff like that. That's very like if you look at B War, <clears throat> which I know I'm usually an F War guy, but I just had ESPN open. Yeah, yeah, so I, went, they, I believe they use B War. Um, it goes Simeon and, Ac and Acuna both have three wins above replacement, and then, then Luis Robert, Chappie, Chappie, Wander Franco, Kevin Kiermeyer, Bo Bichette, Taylor Walls, and then you get all the way down to ninth. Dansby Swanson is a two point one wins above replacement. That's the next closest guy in the NL. I I mean, hey, <laughs> how about fucking Kevin Kiermeyer? Do you guys see the that catch, catch that he was made? outstanding? Yeah. That was fucking unbelievable, dude. That that yeah. is the pinnacle. That is the perfect example of maximizing the tracking, the timing, and the leap of your play of your effort as an outfielder up against the wall like that. Because he, in football, they call it high pointing, and he high pointed that baseball at its peak. The highest this ball could have possibly gotten with Kiermaier being able to get to it is where Kiermaier caught that ball. And he caught it up against the wall. He had to time himself. He had to chop his steps. And if he doesn't do any of that perfectly, 
He doesn't make this play. And it was fucking otherworldly. But the dude is playing pretty good baseball right now. So it's a very underrated acquisition. I mean, what he does for them defensively, as we're talking about right now, cannot go understated. It just can't because of the pressure he takes off of guys in the corner. But what he's doing offensively at this time is he's hitting over 300 right now. Yeah, he is. I think he's doing pretty good. Yeah. I mean, fuck. And, and granted, like how many at bats, Jay? Hey? Like maybe a hundred, like maybe a I was going to say hundred. I think it's more. I think it's like 150, like but okay. um, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit less than every day. Uh, he's at 138 plate appearances, um, okay. 317, 372, 492. So he's got a little pop in there too. It's not, yeah. it's not just batting yeah, what, average. What, what, what's he got like four or five homers, three, four, five, somewhere around there. Yeah. Probably. Three homers, three, five steals. Yeah. Yeah. So nine doubles, sexy little two triples. Qu- quiet acquisition but um because i think a lot of people are like yeah offense meh. it's kiermeyer he's going to play great center field for it. is it going to be every day i don't know and it's because of what the offense could or won't be but as of right now 138 plate appearances hit north of 300 with a little bit of thump there fucking take that not to completely derail us but the kiermeyer thing maybe go to the savant's uh outfield jump page because I was like, oh, I wonder. I mean, I mean, I'm sure he's very high, but I was kind of curious where he ranked in that this year. And the top five in outfield jump to me is just fascinating. The names. Tatis where are you at, Jay? Is, I'm on Savant. Uh, it's under outfield jump under the fielding okay. category. Uh, and then okay. feet versus average. So Fernando Tatis is one. Uh, Suzuki, say a Suzuki in Chicago is two. Kiermaier, three. Jackie Bradley Jr., four. And then Jazz Chisholm, five reason that's interesting to me is you basically have two of the best pure defensive outfielders of their generation in Jackie and Kiermaier. You have a guy who hasn't been over here very long, and then you have two converted infielders in who are presumably relying on mostly their athleticism and instincts uh, in Jazz and Tatis. I just It's kind of interesting how Tatis goes to the outfield. He immediately is just like, yeah, I'm locked in. I'm just getting amazing jumps on every single baseball. Well, he's like, <laughs> what have we got? Got breaking news here. Oh my god. It's pretty good. Better not be about Caleb Ort. It's not about Caleb Ort or Matt Strom. <laughs> I promise you. According to MLB PR, MLB's weekend attendance of oh, yeah. 1,518,016 fans was its highest in Six April years. or May since 20. 20- 17. Yep. Mm. Got to love that. Is that the new rules? Like, what is that? I feel like interleague. <laughs> interleague? Yeah, that's a, that, that's a good point. Um, good point interleague games get 9% more attendance on average. Well, and, and Joe, that's I was going to say, it can't go. It can't go just dismissed because what you are, what you have available to you this year as a baseball fan is something that you've never had available to you, which is the opportunity to watch your team play every other team in baseball. So you've got to account for those games that have been watched where they're playing teams that they've never seen their team play before. That's a thing. Also, the way that the game has changed, I think, has interested people. And that has a lot to do with it. And it kind of circles back to that fine line that com- the commissioner and business people have to walk because what does this number tell us? If there's more people interested in this game, then would it be safe to assume that somehow, some way, that nets out positively as far as income goes? I think that's a safe correlation to make. If more people are consuming the sport, then I feel like we could probably agree that maybe that means more people going to the game. Maybe that means more people buying a jersey, buying a shirt, whatever it may be. There's more eyeballs. There's more money to be made. There's more revenue to be generated. The more people who are consuming the product. Mm. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, get to some final thoughts in a second. But if um, if you're planning on going to any games this week, which I would love to, but I'm not on the West Coast, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go down to the Woo Sox so I can see some real big league talent like Caleb Orr. <laughs> While the Red Sox are on the West Coast, you can still see some baseball out here. 
Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. By the way, you know what? You know what? I'm not going to use my final thought on this, but I did want to. I, I want to give some love to Taylor Swift. I didn't, I didn't go to any of the concerts, obviously. But the other night, it was torrential downpouring. And, and she slayed. Taylor, yeah, she was out there, did the whole set list. She was smiling, having the time of her life. Like, yeah, whatever. The fans stuck it out, but they're absolute lunatics. But Taylor Swift. I mean, I I won't go outside if it's drizzling. I'll, I'll fuck up my hair. Like, remember uh, Spikes Up toured Dallas in 20... I can't remember if it was 19 or 20. I think it was 19. The 19 one, like, it was, like, spitting out. And you're like, all right, let's go, like, dice these guys up. I'm like, I'm not going outside in the rain. Yeah. Taylor Swift calls me a pussy for that. Taylor Swift was <laughs> out there putting on banger after banger after banger for four hours in a torrential downpour. I wouldn't even go out there. It's, like, semi-raining out. So, Bro, if they paid you ten million a show, you would do it. I don't know that she gets ten million a show. I know she gets a lot. Well, she's very well compensated for sure, but she can like stars of that level could easily just say, "Yeah, I'm not doing it." No, they can't. No, you oh, cannot. Yes, find, you can't no, just. Yes, I can. We'll find Morgan out Wall on your second. Can't full tour. We're gonna find out on your second DraftKings deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Yeah, we should start doing that. If it rains, I'm not doing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, anyways, buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you'll have. Again, I did not go to Taylor Swift, but uh, if you're if you want to go to Taylor Swift, I bet you Game Time has those. They probably have your favorite baseball team in there. They probably get some comedy. Go go see a comedy show. 162 game. It's a lot. It's a lot. If it's an off night, I'm not saying I'm not saying go to a comedy show instead of watching your baseball team. But when you get those precious off nights, go go see a comedy show. Game Time will hook you up for that too. Uh, game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Uh, NBA Finals tickets for the Boston Celtics, you can grab those too. The Game Time guarantee means that you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Get images of your seat right before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the promo code Jared, J-A-R-E-D. For $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the promo code Jared. $20 off. Uh, Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Um, Final thoughts? I have a final thought. Yeah. What's that? Little Orioles love. This time of the minor league variety. Jackson Holiday, this is according to Eric Cross. Jackson yeah. Holiday has now gotten on base in all 35 games this season and in 40 straight games dating back to last season. The last time he didn't get on base was September 2nd, 2022. Um so it looks like the uh Matt Holiday's kid is going to be all right for the Orioles. Uh yeah. another big another big He was, big time he was doing book reports last time he wasn't on base. Crazy. That's my final thought. <clears throat> Dallas. Um, I, I think I just go back to uh, go back to the division, the the AL East, and what that looks like, how that's shaping up, and the fact that, like I said, with the ridiculous start that the Rays got off to, the Baltimore Orioles today, latter part of May, are just two and a half back. Mm. Just two and a half back. And I mean, it's the only division in baseball right now that every team has a positive run differential. Um, it, it just is. It's it's an exciting it's an exciting division right now to watch, especially with those those top two teams, the Rays and the Orioles. But, the, you know, the Yankees there at five and a half, I would cut the I I'd probably draw a line at like teams that are seven games back or more you don't really pay it not really paying attention to but 
the Rays and the that's O's not right true. now. Those even though even those teams can get into the playoffs right now because you know you've got teams like the Oakland A's that are in here. Like there's just a lot of shit. There's a lot of garbage ass teams. Yeah, no, so no, even if just you're a, even if you're no no no. Let me finish. It's even just if a you're very random place, number even, that I selected. Even yeah, even if the even if you finish in fourth place in the American League East, you can still make the playoffs. That's how good that division is, and how awful the other teams are uh, at the bottom of other divisions like the Oakland A's. Um, you can still make the playoffs by finishing in fourth, which is crazy. Think about that. Yeah, well, it's it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be something to watch for, which is why it was my final thought. Something to just continue to keep an eye on, because again, if you're just picking a very random and arbitrary number at teams that are seven games or more <laughs> yeah. behind the division lead, then you've yeah, got a yeah, pretty yeah. good idea where your focus is going to be. That's why I just wanted to put mm-hmm. that number out there so our fans right. and our listeners had a good idea of which teams to pay attention to. That's all. No, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays, after beating the Yankees on May 5th, improved to 27-6. and six. Uh, They have since gone 7-8, and eight, while the Orioles have gone 9-6. and six. So we're starting to see that gap close on up. Does anyone, I'm not going to let you switch your pick. But does anyone think that the Orioles will, even if they don't win the division, will there come a time over the course of this season, this summer, where the Orioles grab even a piece of first place, even if they're tied for a day? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Anyone else agree? Yeah. I'll say that the Orioles spend more time in first place than they do in last place this year. I'll say that. Hmm. (laughs) How's that? How's that limb? Huh? How's that limb? That's a pretty big limb, yeah. I don't know. That's a good. That's kind of good. There's not. There's not too much far off. It's a tough division. You could see it going either way. You could be in last in the AL East and still be good. Okay, that's true. It's very true. Toronto Blue Jays. Not to throw shade at them. Um, Joseph, hey. final thought. Um. Well, like you were bringing up the Cardinals. Cardinals are on fire. Mm-hmm. Why are they on fire? Because they're hitting. Why are they hitting? Because a guy named Nolan's on the team. Mm. Nolan Gorman, baby. Oh. Nolan. Oh, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> no one ever talks about the guy. Leads the National League in OPS and slugging. He's fucking 23 years old. Mm-hmm. And he's been their best player. No one ever talks about him, but he is like one of the young, bright stars in MLB. Who, uh, yeah, gets no attention. Do you think more people would talk about him if his name was Derek? (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, he gets overshadowed a lot. Do you think he gets overshadowed because his name is Nolan and they already have a Nolan that's a star? Uh, no, but I don't think think that's that's a factor. If you say Nolan has something to do with it, I'm not sure. If you say the name Nolan, I don't think no one would know his first name either way. If you if you say the name Nolan, people automatically think of Nolan Arenado. Maybe Dallas thinks of Nolan Ryan. Yes. But if you're a modern-day baseball fan, you say the name Nolan, you're thinking of Nolan Arenado. If his name was Derek Gorman or Vincenzo Gorman, Vincenzo. then I guarantee you people are like, <laughs> yeah, like, Nolan Arenado is sick, but Vincenzo? Are you kidding me? That dude oh, is Vinny nasty go. this year. Vinny yeah. Go goes. Vinny Go goes, Lars, yeah. baby. Vincenzo yeah. Gorman. Or Lars... <laughs> Lose Vincenzo Lars Gorman. <laughs> no, no, yeah, Jay, Lars hey, Lupar, I, is gonna No, it's Gor- it's Gorman. It's Gorman. Yeah, it's Gorman. <laughs> Vincenzo Gorman. <laughs> <laughs> to go along with Pedro Alonso. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, if you're a Cardinals fan and you're listening to this, if you get Vincenzo going in St. Louis, uh, yeah, then I mean, more people are going to talk about him. Like that's an electric name, <laughs> Vincenzo Gorman. Well, it's it, I mean, it's really like a midseason acquisition, right? Yeah, <laughs> if you're a team lucky enough to add a Vincenzo Gorman to your lineup <laughs> at the most pivotal time of the well, season, yeah. How how much yeah. can we give the Cardinals? I mean, honestly, this podcast just gives and gives to Cardinals. It really Nation. does, and they don't deserve it. The fans are so not at mean. All. No, they're so mean. Yeah, a bunch uh, of uneducated, <laughs> ignorant fucking baseball fans, vile yeah. group of fucking humans. Bet they've never Vincenzo even heard of Vincenzo Gorman. Gorman. Yeah, didn't even, didn't even know you had a Vincenzo Gorman in your own backyard. 
<laughs> Entering play on Monday, Vincenzo Gorman is hitting 302 with a 391 on base, has a league leading 640 slug, a league leading uh, 1032 OPS, and a league leading 180 OPS plus. Put <laughs> some go. respect on Vincenzo Gorman's name. Paisan Gorman is the fucking <laughs> man. Yeah. 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 Oh. Thank you, Joe, for bringing that up. I I would buy a Vincenzo Gourmet (laughs) t-shirt. He's nasty. Um, My final thought, Christopher Morell. How do you not talk about this guy and the couple of weeks that he's had? Um, Cam, he made a season debut back on May 9th, homered, and has proceeded to hit eight home runs in the 11 games that he has played this year. Uh, 17 for 46, eight homers, three doubles. He's got the 1352 OPS. And he's the first Cub in franchise history, which obviously goes back to 1901, to hit eight home runs in the first 11 games of a player season. The Cubs have been he's around on pace for, for 92. Thank you. Yeah, look at that. 92 Joe. home runs. Look at that. Segments already. You're already, already getting ready. Christopher Morrell uh, produced more wins above replacement during this homer run than Eric Hosmer did for the entire Padres contract. Damn. You're an angry, angry man. No, I'm <laughs> never been better, actually. Interested to see what mm. post-playing career looks like for him. Probably a lot of Ed Hardy t-shirts. <laughs> Good. <job. laughs> wow. <laughs> My God. <laughs> He's spiteful today. <laughs> Uh, is that it? Um, I that's need it. Eat. I need to eat food. <laughs> All right, why don't you go eat food? We'll be back on Wednesday. Uh, go to the DraftKings Sportsbook and ride with the Baseball is Dead parlay every single Monday. It's one pick from each guy. Uh, we'll be back on Wednesday. The debut of Joey's On Pace segment coming in hot. Enjoy uh, the early week series and we'll see you on Wednesday. We out.